Welcome to the F Word. On the menu tonight, onion tart with fried quail's eggs, breast of duck with gooseberry sauce, and a four-minute chocolate mousse. All simple and delicious recipes that you can cook at home. Plus, I declare war on an American invader. They're overfed, oversexed, and they're over here. And my chat with Jesse Wallace doesn't quite go to plan. Now, you're famous for having a glass of wine. I'm oh. famous for having a glass of wine. Yeah, well, sort of vino. I'm famous for having a glass of wine. <laughs> Gentlemen, good evening. Nice to meet you. Joe, how are you? Chris, Gordon. are you well? Very well, thank you. And Josh. Gordon. And Stuart. Very well, thank you, Gordon. So, Birmingham's finest. We are. We're nice. Yes, so. apparently. Just the outskirts of Birmingham. Well, are you being what? snobby now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you're here because you're talented cooks. Yeah. yeah. Tonight's going to be completely different to how you'd run a fucking dinner party at home. Yeah? yeah? I can imagine. Let's get started then, yes? Yes, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh. Let's go. OK, gentlemen, on order, yes? Yeah. First ticket of the night. For me, the first ticket is the most important. If yes, we get yes, this yes. one right, the whole night moves forward. Yes, yes. Start off like a bunch of fucking donkeys. It's going to be a long night, yes? Yes, yes. chef. Wakey, wakey, yes? On order, four covers table ten, four artichoke tart, four breasts of duck, and four chocolate mousse. Yes, yes chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Tonight's start as a simple onion tart on a puff pastry base, served with soft and creamy quail's eggs. So, onion puree covers 90% of the base, yes? Yeah. Are these asparagus have been lightly blanched in boiling water, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lightly cooked, yes? Yes, sir. Artichokes, asparagus, yeah? yeah? This is not that difficult, is it? No, chef. Huh? Three or four tomatoes, make the tart look fruitful. Yes, yeah, chef. Yes, yeah, chef. The nice thing about this tart is you can do it any time of the year with different kind of vegetables from the season. Right, don't put them in the oven yet. OK. First of all, get eight quail's eggs in a pan. Don't get them too hot, otherwise the eggs start blistering. OK? Right, once all your quail eggs are in there, Put your tarts in the oven. Right, Stuart. Yes, Chef. Get those fucking chip and lather fingers working. Let's go. <laughs> right, guys, you should start getting some tarts in the oven by now, yes? Yes, Chef. Yes, chef. Come on. Come on, boys. Yours in, pot, okay. yeah? Sue, the quail egg is the easiest thing to do. You're here because you're a Where's good cook. You can't even fry a fucking egg. Come on. Here, mate. My name's Joe. I feel at home in the kitchen. The knife feels at home in my hand. My dream is to have a chain of exclusive small boutique hotels around the world with fantastic restaurants in them. My name's Chris. Gordon Ramsay is a hero for me. A few of my friends think it's a bit of an unhealthy obsession, I think. My name's Josh. I tend to be very quick thinking in a fast restaurant. You need that. Um, I wouldn't say I'm the best cook. I just wouldn't say... Nah, actually, I would say I'm the best cook. My name's Stuart. Cooking for me is all about timing and precision. Myself and the other guys are 100% committed. We're in it to win it. Gordon Ramsay's a bit of a pussycat, really. He can shout. He's like Delia Smith and uh, Simon Cow's love child, isn't he, really? We're very good at cooking. Cheers. Best of luck. For us, it's all about winning. I'm not interested in coming second. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Just... Service, please. Wait. How much vinegar you put on there? Just a drizzle. Shoot, why'd you there. do that? Look. Please. Sorry, shit. Yeah, look, just, look. Just, I mean, I'm not being funny, but look. There's huh? a touch on that. I mean, how much just vinegar you put on there? Yes, sir. Huh? Look, just touch your finger on that fucking thing now. What? Soaking. Yeah, it's soaking wet. Huh? It's fucking wetter than you. Start again. Yes, chef. Yeah. Okay, now. Right, Joe. Yes. Are sir. they ready? Yes. Yes, chef. Yes. yes. Chef. Where's the chives? I thought it was on the plate. Sorry, chef. Come on, guys. That's enough. Just look, just a dribble, yeah? Yes, the idea is a nice crispy base, yeah? Yes, Nothing soggy. That's it. A dribble. Yes, Nothing chef. more than that. Let's go. We don't serve soggy pastry, do we? Chef. Service, please. Thank you. OK, one more table coming in. Come on, guys, please. Go some cows. Got to make sure the fire's coming here in one minute. Uh, Chris. Yes, Chef. Come here a minute. Sure as well, yeah? Cos you two have, like, fucking gone off the ball a little bit. Just touch that, will you? Come on. There. And you, come on, hurry up, touch it. Stone fucking cold. Yes, Chef. I mean, yes, chef. fridge cold. Can we get them in the oven and get them warm, please? Yes, yes? Chef. Come on. Yes, did chef. they go in the oven? Yes, they did, Chef. 
You're lying, aren't you? Yes, I am, Chef. You are. Why do you find it funny when you're lying? I forgot, Chef, sorry. Hey. Oh, no. Hey, 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 hey. What? Yeah, what? Well, OK, then what's what? What's what? Soft, sorry, sorry, Chef, that's Creamy that fucking yolks, okay. and I've got another omelette again. Okay, well, hang, Chef, there's, there's four there that are perfect. Hey, hey guys, come. Hey, listen, come here a minute. Just stop what you're doing. Hey, two seconds. All of you, come here a minute. Come here, come here, come here. How are you going to feel at the end of the night if I just bang this shit out? You're arguing with me with a fucking... a flat fucking pile of shit. I don't want to argue with you guys. I just want to get it right to get it out. Yes, yes, yes. So every time I say something, you're all a fucking bunch of chippy little fuckers that want to tell me that how good you are. Cos right now, I think you're shit! Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Service. Go. Go, please. Last table, yes? Clear down, yes? Fucking hell. There's just one more week before my pigs, Trini and Susanna, go to the slaughterhouse. And as it's one of the hottest days of the year, I have to take extra care that they're coping. They're not moving very fast in the heat. No, well, don't forget, they suffer sometimes in the heat. Come here, please, oh, Meg. Behind the ears. There you go. See? She likes that. Hey? Pigs have no sweat glands, so to keep cool, they like to cake themselves in mud. They really are enjoying that. <laughs> Hello, mate. All right, pig man. Are you well? Yeah. I've called Hugh Furley Whittingstall to see if there's yeah, any more I can do to keep the pigs Some comfortable in the heat. Now. now, why is their skin gone all flaky like that, Hugh? Well, it could be a little bit of sunburn, but I, I don't think it's too bad. I think it's, it doesn't look sore. It looks like it's going to be a, a few more scorching hot days, so I did bring them a little bit of this. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Factor 20. Oh, dear. They're not always very sensible about sunbathing pigs. No. They're a bit like people. <laughs> The pig's skin produces less natural oil than most animals, making them particularly prone to sunburn behind the ears. <laughs> Gordon is going to have to deal with a difficult, very emotional day when they go to hey, slaughter. Come on, lady. <laughs> They're beautiful. He's feeling really quite attached to them at the moment. He's had a, a great spring looking after them. It's going to be a shock for him. The thing is, Gordon, actually, you've, you've probably far exceeded the normal level of contact, even from a, you know, a regular pig man looking after his pigs, really? probably doesn't get as emotionally involved yeah. as you have. Yeah. You've got a little under a week now. You've the really shot. got to start focusing on the fact that this is not family, they're not even family pets. No. You've reared them for meat, you've reared them for food. Is I it normal to feel guilty, though? Because that's what I've been uh, feeling over the last two weeks. I think you're going to feel guilty. I don't think there's any way around that. I mean, you could argue forever about the morality of whether we should or shouldn't eat meat. But one thing's for sure, if we are going to eat meat, we should look after our animals well. Properly. And you've done that. And, and in the end, it's sort of something you, can, you kind of have to deal with on your own. But I think you'll be all right. Fuck. The artichoke, the egg, everything, it all went together really well, I thought, and it was all quite tasty. I actually really enjoyed it. I found the pastry a little bit tough to get through. Um, but everything else was absolutely lovely. Gordon. OK. What's the results? 24 people are not paying for the, for the Why staff. not? A few different reasons. One of them is the, uh, the base is solid. Uh -huh. uh, another one is the, uh, it's too soggy as well. It's soggy? Yeah, with the vinegar, you know? Too much vinegar. So solid and soggy? Yeah. I can understand it being soggy because they fucking sit too long. OK, but solid, it could be yeah. if they overcook them, but they flash them to the oven for 30 seconds. Yeah. How long will you put them in the oven for? 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Anyone put them in there longer than that? No, Chef, no, Chef. No? Or no, you chef. forgot to put them in at one stage. If it's hard and they can't cut through it, that's either it's been in the oven too long or, yeah, they're stone cold. Yeah, chef, yeah, chef. So 24 customers don't want to pay for their starter? Yeah, they're not paying at all. That's just under half the dying room. Yeah, I know. It's bad. So they like duck? They so they like duck? I think we're no, fucked. Let's go, Chef. Oh, Christ of mine. Half the dining room. That's a fucking joke. Next on the menu, I get twin sister midwives to deliver the perfect Sunday lunch. When the fire alarms go off in the house, <laughs> when they start going, then I know that dinner's always oh, done. And in the recipe challenge, Nick Knowles takes on an F-word classic. I have cooked it before uh, for a woman, and I have to say it's gone down very well. Do you get a shake? <laughs> Over 
overfed, oversexed, and they're over here. The American signal crayfish has taken over. In the 1970s, freshwater crayfish tails were all the rage, but our puny native crayfish were considered too small. So farmers started breeding the fatter and meatier American signal crayfish. Big mistake. The Americans took over, and 30 years on, they've invaded 85% of our British rivers, virtually wiping out our native crayfish, and now they're destroying our riverbanks. We've got to fight back. Fight back by eating as many as we can. There are over 250 million American crayfish in our rivers. Mike Robinson owns a pub where they're a bestseller on the menu. He's brought Jack and I to the River Pang in Berkshire to show us how to catch them. I reckon that fish is the best bait. Yeah. Because if you think about it, what do they probably eat the most of is dead fish on the bottom yeah, of the river. All the time, yeah. They're scavengers. Slash them. Yeah. Right? That's irresistible to a crayfish. All we have to do is chuck it in yeah. and uh, tie it to a tree. I mean, it's like the same process of a lobster pot. Exactly. Yeah. It's a perilous game, this. Yeah. You do need to get a license from the environment agency to do this. So but just like the crayfish, it. they're free. So, you've got so this is perfect. It's a natural feeding yeah. ground for the crayfish. Yeah. They're going to come out the bank and they're going to smell that and they'll yeah. come 100 yards upriver to that bait. Go for it. Beautiful. I could catch 20 kilos of crayfish. In here? In here, in one night. When the yep. water temperature yep. drops below 10 degrees, you can forget it. Really? Yeah, they, go, they hibernate, they just go to sleep. So in the winter, where do they go? Under the riverbanks. Okay. And that's when they cause all the damage, because they burrow deep to get away from the cold, and yep. they just curl up and hang out. Oh, Jack, look. Is there a fish? No, there's a crayfish down there. Where? Look, just there. Here's a huge no, crayfish. Here you go, here you go, here you go. Oh, look at that, the size of him. I mean, it's like a lobster. That's a, that, that the is size a monster. Of... That's... Honestly, that, I mean, that's incredible. Just look at that there, though, in terms of meat. I know. Huh? Just... How much claw meat's in there? It's unbelievable. Really? You can look after him, Jack. You're going to keep an eye on it. That's your okay. first crayfish. OK, let's go. You keep your eye on that one, eh? Crayfish are night feeders, so you leave the traps out overnight. We're collecting traps that Mike put down yesterday. If you were a prawn trapper in the sea, yeah. you'd be delighted to get yeah. that. Whoa. That's one night. Whoa. Look at them. What would a native you know, crayfish well, look like? I mean, same colour? No, they're, no. they're sort of pale, paler, whiter in colour. Yeah. That's, a, that's an adult native would be that size. Whereas these guys, five to six inches long, yeah. ow! If people ate them more and more, then yeah. it would help the yeah. environment. And it would... Hell, yeah. where can you go and get 20 kilos of free prawns? Yeah. If you don't want to catch your own, you can order American freshwater crayfish from your fishmonger. Now it's time to get these critters home and into the pot. Guess who caught the biggest crayfish? Jack. Out she comes. Is it not fish? Let's give them a little rinse, OK, and let's get cooking them, shall we? There's a big one. Oh, <laughs> Fresh crayfish, it doesn't get any better than this. These are going to be turned into the most amazing crayfish salad. Boiling water and crayfish in. And just watch them change colour now within seconds. They cook within two and a half to three minutes max. And look at the colour of them. Straight out. If you peel them when they're warm, they come away from the shell a lot easier. Body's off from the towel. Look at that. That is delicious. Mm. Slow roasted tomatoes, green salad, freshwater crayfish tails, and vinaigrette. There you have a delicious crayfish salad that costs fuck all. Twenty-four fucking customers are refusing to pay for their starter. Uh -huh. I want fifty customers paying for their duck. <laughs> chef, Otherwise, chef. we're fucked. Yes, yeah? chef. We're Let's go. Be, we're not yes. going to be fucked. Let's go. Pan on. Season the duck. Yes, Get ready. Yes. Good. Get on there. Yes, chef. Let's go, guys. Yes, chef. Right. Chris. Yes, chef. Four duck away. Table three, please. Yes, chef. Josh. Yes, chef. Four duck away, please. Table ten. Yes, chef. Let's go. Time for the main course: roast duck with spring greens and gooseberry sauce. Breast. Bit of a chef's favourite because it's absolutely full of flavour. Yamey, very rich, and the texture is extraordinary. Score. Don't go all the way through, just the layer of fat. Szechuan pepper. Lightly roast them in a dry pan. The smell is amazing. 
Season. Grind. Rub. Almost like you're massaging. And this is one of the most amazing seasonings in Chinese cookery and makes the duck very aromatic. Mop it up into a dry pan on a low heat, slowly cook. Gooseberry sauce, sugar, water. Lemon zest, boil, gooseberries. You've got that sweet and sour tanginess against the rich, sumptuous of the duck is delicious. Just bring back up to the ball and take off the heat. Set aside, red wine, season. Now that's reduced down to a really nice syrup, and that gives us nice shine to the sauce and starts to give it some body. Chicken stock. Reduce. That's the basic method of making a sauce in all our kitchens. Gooseberries in. Honey. Get your spoon, put it into the sauce, and watch a nice hot spoon, how easy it drops off. Butter. Take off the heat and just shake. Look at that gloss. Very velvety, beautiful gooseberry sauce. That's ready to go. Now look what's happened to the duck. Turn up the heat, start colouring the duck. And the nice thing about the Szechuan pepper now, it's starting to smell slightly sweeter and it's becoming a lot more aromatic. Fat side down, into the oven. Hot oven, 10 minutes. Now, the smell is amazing. Three or four slices, maximum. Onto the plate and glaze. And those gooseberries are just nice and soft and plump. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Duck with gooseberry sauce. Done. Come on, guys. Yeah, it's payback time, yes? Yeah. One table each, yes? Come on, you pay your go on first. And Stu. Yes, chef. The trick with duck is to lose the fat and keep the flavour, yes? Yes, chef. And the Szechuan pepper sort of gives it a little bit more oomph there, yes? Yes, chef. OK, right, cook on this fat. A couple more minutes. Yeah, yeah. Right, potatoes. Sauté potatoes. Yes, chef. Oil in the pan. Potatoes in. Try and get them really nice and crispy. Now I'm going to put a teaspoon of garlic in there, a little bit of shallot. OK? Not the butter in there. And watch what happens. They start sautéing beautifully, yes? Pass me the duck, Chris. Yes, I'll show you how to dress the plate. Watch. A little bit of cabbage. Potatoes. This size, four, yes? Yes, yeah. chef. OK. Watch the duck. Look. Come here. Fat side, turn it round, yes? Yeah. One. Two, three, four. Nice. Turn it back round. As it goes on the cabbage, it fans out Go. nicely. Sauce over the duck. And when you sauce over the duck like that on top, oh, it just gives it a little bit of extra heat, yeah, yes? Yeah. Yes, chef. Up. Sauce the last two. Let's go. That's how I want them, OK? Move your ass. Let's go. Let's go. Chris. Yes, chef. Are they burning there? Turn it over. Quick. Fucking hell, Chris. Yeah, it's burnt, yeah? Yes, it is burnt. Start again, Chris, please. Yes, chef. Chris, don't fuck the duck. Start yes, again. Let's go. Yes, chef. Come on, guys. Yes, Josh. Josh, take those, yes, chef. What in the fuck have you done there? Josh, take... Josh. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Joe, don't leave your brother in the shit. Open up, guys. I need no, you to help me yes, a little chef. bit. Quickly. They're fucking cooked knock, to fuck. Josh. Come on, speed up, guys, yeah? Not only just moping around the kitchen, but no one's got any fucking oomph in them. Yes, chef. You're walking yes, around like you're yes, fucking buying a new pair of trousers. Sorry, oh. chef. Oh, yeah? Oh, just get oh am I here to work? Yeah. Come on! Get the sauce on. I'm doing, I'm doing. Right, now, service, please. Sauce over. Up. Put it up. Where? Put it up, please. Chef. Put no. the fucking plate up, please. Sorry, guys, I'm fucking trying so hard here, but it's a fucking nightmare. Sorry, Watch. Chef. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Service, please. All like that, yes? Yes, chef. Let's go. Go. Oh, last one. Table 10, yes? Go. Don't make a fucking mess, yes? Everything's on there. It's perfect, yeah? Yes, Don't chef. make a mess. Let's go. Fucking hell. Last table, yes? <laughs> fucking hell, Giles, yeah? 
I would say so nice to see you, but what the fuck is that? Nice to see me. What's that? It's like it's like UFO. What is it? That's a Jaffa cake. Can't you? What happens in your misspent youth? Did you not eat Jaffa cakes? I love Jaffa cakes, but that. I mean, my God, on my seat. Is it serious? It's a pint Jaffa cake. Who made it? When I made it. Britain, home of the giant carrot and the unfeasibly large leek. Just what is it about old people and the growing of gigantic vegetables? Whatever it is, the craze for creating giant foodstuffs has been passed on to the young as well. But they're not interested in huge fruit and vegetables, oh no. They don't even know what vegetables are. What they're doing is making giant, predominantly carbohydrate-based snacks. Biscuits, chocolate bars, that sort of thing. Something known on the street as pimping. I'm not making this up. Snack pimping is a real thing. It's even got its own website at pimpthatsnack.com. It's a genuine phenomenon. The Pimp That Snack site has nearly 200 mega munchies for us to feast our eyes on. I mean, get a load, for example, of this custard cream. See how the cup of tea gives it the scale. It's, it's a whopper. Every stage of the pimping process is photographed and documented. This is fantastic. The chap has really, really pimped his scotch egg. Having wheedled my way into the pimping community, I've been lucky enough to secure an introduction to a Mr. Soup Dog. Hello, Soup. Hello, Giles. Now, you pimped the, the fantastic fist of fudge, didn't you? Indeed I did, yeah. Fair enough, but why pimp anything at all? A lot of it is the challenge. It's, mm -hmm. um, you know, can you deconstruct the snack and then rebuild it up from its, uh, from its kind of core ingredients and, you know, hopefully then improve upon it. Clearly, then, the first step for me is to take Soup's advice and deconstruct the traditional Jaffa cake Sponge base, humectant, disodium diphosphate, smashing orangey bit. Excuse me, yeah. um, where do you have the, the dextrose monohydrate? Uh... If anybody stops and asks, personal consumption. Righty ho, I need 240 grams of butter. 1.5 kilos, 450 of sugar, 6 tablespoons of corn flour, 18 eggs. The base is the key. If I can crack that, I can surely crack the giant Jaffa cake. Voila. Now, the problem is, of course, that the domestic oven, particularly mine, is not big enough to cope with a giant Jaffa cake, a pimped snack. I'm hoping you fit this in your oven. OK, let's see how it's turned out. It has Jaffa cake written all over it. To make the orange filling, I used a couple of packets of tangerine jelly mixed with boiling orange juice and some additional gelatin. OK. The zesty jelly centre in its wet state. Right, time for the smashing orangey bit. <sighs> Easy. Another picture. It just rolls off the edge. You have to remember that I'm not just baking a cake, I'm pimping a snack. I'll send my pictures to the website where they'll join the other 200 snacks pimped to date and be subject to peer review. I named my pimp snack Jaffa Quake. Within 24 hours of my posting it, it went straight to number one, with over 300 voters giving it an average score of 9.24 out of 10. I love Jaffa Cakes, but Christ almighty. That is fantastic. <laughs> How's about that? That really looks like a Jaffa cake. You've got all your hairs in there, Giles. Is that a hairs or...? It's one of my girlfriend's hairs. It's a girlfriend's hair. Yeah, we did it in so my she... kitchen at home. I have to say, you know, I thought it was going to be delicious. It doesn't taste that good, you know that? It tastes it's... terrible. It tastes <laughs> fucking plastic. Do me a favour. <laughs> Fuck off and take a Jaffa cake with you. Thank you very much. I hope you have success in all you do. <laughs> Thank you, Giles. Oh, dear. <laughs> Hi, Gordon. Hi, my darling. You well? Fine, thank you. You're looking great. Thank you. Nice to see you. Ladies, thank how are you? you? Um, did you enjoy your main course? Happy with? Fantastic. Would you pay for dinner? Yes, I would, definitely. Thanks for, for that. Good to see you. Thank you. Now, you like your I food. do pay for my dinner. So, <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I heard you like your meat pink. No! <laughs> no! Oh, dear. <laughs> No, in terms of you like sort of, you know, you like... Not too, not too rare. Pink, no, not too rare, but pinkish, pink yeah, yeah, which is great. So you're not yeah. one of those girls that screams and cook it well done for me. You like it no, quite pink, no, which is nice. No, yeah. Now, you're famous for having a glass of wine as well. I'm famous for having a glass of wine. Yeah, well, sort of, you know. I'm famous for having a glass of wine. Fam Hello? You're a, girl, you're a girl that knows how to enjoy what herself. What about acting? You're not famous back. for having a glass of wine, Gordon. No, no, I said how are you going. I love a glass of wine. Yeah, which is nice. <laughs> I'm not famous for it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think at first that it was 
spree would work very well with the duck. I thought it might be a bit too tart, but it was actually just complemented the tenderness of the duck really well, brought out the flavour of the duck. And I really enjoyed that. It was a really nice taste to it, really nice crunch as you sort of tasted the duck. It was, um, it was very good. Right, right. Uh, guys, come over, please. The results of the main course. I know the starters went slightly pear shaped, but yeah. I hope the fuck you got some good news for the duck, yes? Very good news. Good news? Yes. How many are paying for the duck? 47. Yay. 47? Yes. 47 is fucking brilliant. Yeah. Well done. What's wrong with the three? What's the three? The three, three? Uh, they mainly said that the, the duck was overcooked. What? Was overcooked? overcooked? Yeah. It was cooked for four minutes. Everything was pink. I thought you'd done a fucking great job to get that back up there. I think you can understand why I was fucking pissy to make sure that what left this kitchen was absolutely spot on. Right down to a potato, yes? Yes, Well done. Now let's make sure that 50 customers pay for their fucking desserts, yes? Yes, Let's go. Well done. Next on the menu, ladies' man Nick Knowles takes on my classic beef wellington in the recipe challenge. I always thought you were the most amazing handyman. <laughs> yeah, but not with building. <laughs> and the men in white coats come for Janet Street Porter. Don't worry, I don't touch I'm you. Listen, I'm not going to do you for sexual harassment while I've got a plate of cotton rags. Uh, what have you been doing with those fucking things, huh? Uh, it's like a sack of potatoes. That's just how they are. Uh, uh, welcome back. Now, we all know that Nick Knowles is no good with a paintbrush and a hammer, but will he be any better with a fucking frying pan? No. <laughs> Let's go. What are you doing? We're going to do uh, a fillet steak yes. wrapped in porcini mushrooms and herbs. Uh, wrapped again in uh, parma ham. Right, so you're wrapping it twice, mushrooms and parma ham. Uh, herbs, mushrooms, parma ham. It's exactly the same as mine, except I'm going to go a little bit further and wrap it in pastry. Yes. Listen, I'm making this up as I go along. I haven't been taught by anybody. I've had to teach myself. Right, haven't you got any work to do? <laughs> yeah, well, we started, are we? For the last five minutes, all you've given me is fucking excuses. Is this going to work? <laughs> Listen, I don't need to make excuses because this is quality stuff, mate. The whole point yes. is to make something that looks good, tastes good, yep. that's fairly easy, because yep. obviously I'm not a chef, but fairly easy to do and has the desired effect when you serve it up to a young lady. I have cooked it before uh, for a woman, and I have to say it's gone down very well. Did you get a shake? <laughs> Listen, wait, um, it's, it's terribly bad form to talk about women behind, you know, after you've actually been... Yes. That's, that's a no, then. <laughs> so it's very fragrant, this dish, then? It's very lovely. And what it should do is, when you open up the parcel, there should be a little line of greenness, sort of, with the, with the herbs... Yep. ...all the way around the inside, so that it should make it look good. So I've got to do something very similar, so it's very easy for me, because I'm going to just do a fillet of beef wellington. Again, wrapped in mushrooms. But the mushrooms are chopped, so we call that a duxel. Chopped very, very finely in the blender. And then onto the stove to get the water out of them. We're going to wrap them around the beef, then wrap that with parma ham, and then finally wrap it in puff pastry. So hot pan and put your beef in and seal it. Once the beef has been sealed, we take it out of the pan and then just rub it with some really nice English mustard. As it cools down, it goes through the centre of the beef and gives it a really nice flavour. Right. Nicholas, how are we doing? I've just wrapped the, the steak and uh, dipped it in the herbs yeah. and then put some porcini mushrooms either side, wrapped up the parma around it because I don't know how to wrap a steak. So what I did was I decided that I would just wrap it in foil. Yes. And then about halfway through the cooking process, I take the thing out of the oven, unwrap it, and it should hold itself together. Nick, that looks like a jacket potato about to go on the fucking barbecue. Listen, I don't care what it looks like at the moment. It's what it looks like when it comes out on the plate that's important. But that's me done there. That's, that's me... The... That's me ready to go into the oven. And all I've got to do now is make the little sauce that goes with it. So you don't just get the thing, you get a sauce with me. There's a sauce as well. Oh, yeah. I thought, why are you going to put that in the oven? You could fuck off for a shave. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, what I'm doing here is you're using a ladle to take some of the mushrooms yeah. and, uh, and the juice out, because it, it gets this porcini, you get a lot of grit in with porcini mushrooms. Uh, yeah, well, it depends where they're from, yes. So the best thing to do is to do it from the top like that with a ladle, yeah. then you don't get the grit in it. Cook that up, and uh, with a little bit of lemon, not too yeah. much, though. That'll do. Uh, let's get some... I like lots of pepper in with my stuff, so... So it's really important to cook the mushrooms so they go really nice and dry, got a nice, strong flavour in there, and it stops the pastry from going really soggy. When Nick's got that nice, dark green line of herbs, we'll have a nice, dark line of mushrooms around the fillet of beef. A little bit of garlic. It looks like you've tarmacked at some parma ham. <laughs> tarmacked. Um, it does, like, doesn't it? My plaster could finish that off nicely for you. You're sounding like Nick the Builder now. People think that I know about DIY because I present a, a DIY programme. You do know about DIY, though. Well, not really. I always thought you were the most amazing handyman. No? Ah, yeah, but not with building. 
and, I, you know, and people say things like, I get an enormous amount of satisfaction out of like working for 14 weeks on doing a skirt. I, why? Get a hobby or a girlfriend. Don't do DIY, seriously. Seriously. Pay button, pay a builder. Um, so I'm wrapping mine now. Nick's wrapped his in tin foil, OK? I'm wrapping mine in tin film. And the idea of wrapping is to get a really nice, even shave. Look. Hang on. What that, happens? Isn't that going to melt when you cook it? <laughs> oh, we take the tin film off, you fucking banana. Oh. So we wrap it nice and tight like that. The most important thing is now that it's nice and even. So if it's wrapped evenly, it cooks evenly. You cook, OK? Yeah. Yes? To pull women, right? Well, that's not and only to yeah, pull... No, no, no for, but... for the main objective. On a date. Oh, God, that's disgusting. Hey, and you're still single. The difficulty is, it, like, if, I, if you work as much as I do, yeah. oh. and you're away as much as I do, who's going to part with that? <laughs> really? Seriously? Who's going to... That's horrible. What am I going to do with that? What have you put in there? The porcini mushrooms, the juice of the porcini mushrooms, a little tiny bit of lemon juice, a glass of red wine. Are you normally pissed when you make this dish? Listen, Nick, it's Nick. worked before. I'll tell you what that needs, is the meat juices. You've ruined it because I've had to wait for you to cook <laughs> my steak. Otherwise, so, by now, I'd have the steak juices to put in it to make it OK. What am I going to do with this to, make this, to bring this back round again? So, pastry on, and then egg wash it. And the egg wash obviously helps to stick the pastry together. So it's a very similar recipe to what Nick's doing, except mine's just finished whereby it's wrapped in puff pastry and then rolled. Well, I'm ready for the oven now. Are you? Yeah, yeah I'm ready to go. Yes, so yeah. I'm just going to quickly, lightly season it. In she goes. Five. So they're both in the oven. Both 20 minutes each. Yep. I take mine out to rest, you take yours out, and then I win. Good luck. You reckon? Let's go. Huh? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sunday lunch is the most important meal of the week, and even two identically incompetent cooks can do it. Sunday lunch is a big deal for me. I dread it because my kids expect their Sunday lunch. It's difficult because I work night shifts. When I come home, I'm tired, and all I want to do is just get the dinner done. I dread it because everyone is going to moan at me. As soon as I sit down, there's going to be something wrong. Mummy's food is... Very bad. I don't like it. I burnt everything I cook. Absolutely everything. Sunday lunch. It's pretty non-existent in this house. There's no preparation. It's all thrown together. Right, I'm just going to pick up the nurses that have just finished their night shift. Take them home, show them two or three things, and hopefully they'll keep their uniform on. Oh, my Ladies. God. <laughs> now, uh, who's who? I'm Jamie and I'm Melanie. No, one at a time. Cool yeah, shit. Seatbelts on, please, ladies. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I've never been to the delivery yet. I can't believe that. You know, I'm only being honest with you. I'm not because I, I, I. Four children and they delivery. Yeah, I know, but if I was a lady and I had a vagina, nothing would be coming out of it the size of <laughs> no, a fucking eight-pound baby. Way. You've got four children between you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who gives them a good dinner? They have the school dinner same. Well, they eat the school anyway. I know, but they have a so they get a decent meal. Yes, yeah, to eat. <laughs> have a sandwich when they get home. So the kids know they get better food yeah. at school than they do at home. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> What's in here? What is that? Honey glazed roasted parsnips. They are fucking disgusting. Oh, fuck me. That's roast potatoes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fucking frozen roast potatoes, frozen <laughs> parsnips, and now there's not even any markings on the fucking oven. <laughs> How do you know if what's hot and what's cold? I don't know, we just turn it up, pull back. Um, well, actually, I do know when it's done, when the fire alarm's gone from the house. <laughs> when they start going, then I know that dinner's... Oh, it's done! Come on, Christ. Then. You look fucking great in uniform, but I don't think we can start cooking in those. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, go and get changed. Don't come downstairs with the same clothes. <laughs> Please? Right, ladies. Um, what we're going to do is keep it simple. So we're going to do something that's all in one pot, something that's not stressful, straightforward, so it's a chicken fricassee. A little bit of flour on the plate, OK? Now I want you to put the chicken on there, please. Now, the idea of coating it in flour, A, it gives it a really nice colour on the chicken, and B, it helps to thicken the stock whilst it's cooking. Good. Into the pan. Just careful, watch your fingers. Good. And then in there. OK, we're going to do the vegetables now. Um, what we're going to put in there is carrots, onions and celery, OK? Right, OK. So we're going to try and keep it really nice and sort of chunky, so as they don't cook too quickly. Good. Now, vegetables in, just put them in there. A little bit of rock salt in there, please. What do you think yeah. we're going to do now? What are we going to do? Yeah. Put it on a plate? <laughs> yeah, no, you're going to fucking poison some of the chicken's raw. What a fucking nightmare. White wine in. <laughs> then add stock and simmer for 30 minutes. 
the flavour is ten times better yeah. than that shit in your fridge. <laughs> Serious. It seems quite straightforward, doesn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Nothing shown. <laughs> Change. Now, who'd like some chicken? Some carrots. Nice. What you've got to help me with is to make sure that Mum cooks all the time. Say, Mum, I know you're busy, I know you work night shifts, but we can still have that delicious chicken dish again, yes? Mm. Delivering two cooks. Thank you. Thank you. This has to be the easiest chocolate mousse to make, <laughs> and it tastes fucking delicious. Chocolate petals into a bowl again, bain marie, so it melts very, very quickly. Bring that to the bowl. Now, boil the cream. What that does straight away is sort of almost thickens the chocolate mousse before we actually combine the cream and chocolate. Now look, chocolate's virtually melted already in that short period of time. Cream on, yes? Yeah. All the cream in there. Whisk, 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 and then the rest of it, straight away, quickly. Now, you whisk that over ice, OK? Yeah. Rice for what, for well, what if we whisk it over rice, it sets quicker, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The idea of this, of course, is four minutes. Right. Amaretto into the chocolate. Okay, to perfume the chocolate. Egg whites. Where are they? Touch of sugar. Whisk that up. All the egg white in. Still over the bowl of ice. Yeah. yeah. And then we're now. Fine, now we're biscuits in there. Fold them in. Look. Right, get glasses on the hot plate, please, quickly. A little bit of biscuit. We don't even just set it in the fridge. Okay? Let's go. The F word's culinary cruise missile, Janice Street Porter, insists she wouldn't put any old thing in her gob. Time to find out what she's been putting in this week. Well, I'm making one of my favourite dishes, baked cod. But with cod stocks at an all-time low, we've just got to find an alternative. I'm travelling to the Shetlands to the world's first organic cod farm. Well, I really care about what I eat and I'm not really prepared to eat farmed fish. Call me bonkers, but I think if a fish has had a decent life, you can taste it. And I know that if I catch a mackerel on a line, it tastes fucking great, it tastes brilliant. And it's not just about the taste. I can't help being a little bit skeptical about any type of fish farm. I do feel like something off Noel Edmonds, Mr. Blobby. <laughs> Time to make 50,000 cod. I know the fish farmed here are fed a sustainable organic diet, but what I really want to know is whether they are kept in good conditions. So what's the size of this pen? The volume inside is the size of three Olympic-sized swimming pools. Maximum they would have in here would be 50,000 fish. Fish tend to shoal together. They like to be in close together. The fish are graded in size to stop them eating each other, and the nets are doubled up to stop escapes. So far, so good. But what about the taste? How would you normally cook your cod? If it's really, really fresh, I would it's grill it. Grill it? Yeah. yeah. Just that I'm trying in my feeble way to eat less butter. And you obviously don't care. No, oh, yeah. The downside is that this farmed cod costs a third more than the wild stuff, and I'm not sure that people will pay the extra, so I'm taking it back down to London to put it to the test down at my local chippy. I've got you a present. What's that? It's special cod. Yeah, let's see. Just chuck it all in. Oh, don't start yes. criticising me for a bloody starting. <laughs> I don't touch you. Listen, I'm not going to do you for sexual harassment while I've got a plate of cod in my hands. All right, no, I've done one bit. All right, shall I put it in? Yeah, put it in. Be careful. Go close to the pen. Close, let him go. 
If you bought the regular kind of cod in here, it'd be three ninety. Mm -hmm. But this farm cod is five twenty. Would you pay that bigger difference? Possibly. Five twenty for a size like that seems a little expensive, to be fair. It's all slightly drier, maybe, than a normal pub. Well, I cooked it. Oh, well, that's it. That's it, yeah. It's nice and fresh. Yeah. Tastes like cod. Uh, the batter's um, just right. Yeah, I'll give it the thumbs up, definitely. Next time I go to a supermarket, I will be buying farmed cod, because if we don't make that choice, there will be no more cod left in the sea. But perhaps the answer is for the great British public to stop being so bloody boring and eat different kinds of fish anyway. Plates out. Plates out, Josh. Gordon? Yeah. Yes. Right, one is farm cod. Yes. And one is wild cod. Would you like to taste? Yeah. All the way from Shetland, right? Yep. Right, that one there first. Mm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this one? A little bit more flaky. Mm -hmm. Slightly sweeter, that. I think that one, for me, is the farm. Is that like, right, though? Yes, you're yeah. completely right. Yeah. But slightly more people like the farm than like the wild. But it was pretty even. Really? But when I tell them it was £3.50 extra for half a kilo yeah. of that... But why would farm be a lot more expensive? You mean wild would be more expensive than farm? Why? Well, it's because farm is in its early days. Because <laughs> wild is... Forget wild, but yeah. you won't be getting wild yeah. cod in a few years' time because you won't be allowed to fish it no. anyway. So that is the future, yeah. and one hopes that the price comes down. Yeah. And what about this lot? Are they agreeing to pay extra? They are saying they would pay more because they feel more comfortable really? eating a fish that's sustainable, that comes really? from a sustainable salt. I can't fucking believe that, because half of them aren't paying for my fucking starter. <laughs> and that was a delicious yeah, tart. Can I talk to you about your oh, starter? No, go on, don't puff pastries in your ass already, yes? Yeah, puff pastries has not ass. reached my ass. Have you had a nip and tuck on that? Because it's so because fucking no firm. Because no part of me has been huh? nipped or tuck. And the first time I met you, you totally got on my tits by saying I was the same age as your fucking mother. 59. Thank you. You, you want to tell all the world people at Listen, home? Janet? Look, I can see potatoes, right. look. Oh, for fuck's sake. Can you fuck off and let me cook, please, <laughs> yes? <laughs> dear, oh, dear. Next on the menu is the results of the recipe challenge. So far, it's three wins to me and three wins to the challengers. Will Nick Knowles make it 4-3? Is this man going to stay single for the rest of his life or has he got a chance of pulling a bird that actually enjoys his food? <laughs> Welcome back. Now, judgment time from Nick Knowles and I think his dish needs a little bit of kitchen SOS. Let's see what our blind tasters have got to say. Don't, look. St stop laughing at my dish. Look. I've got one, plenty, of, plenty of stuff for them to look. Don't laugh at my dish. Hey, listen. <laughs> OK. Where's my Frenchman? JB, please, yes? Uh, last <laughs> time, hey, listen. Last time, it was a lot of You laughed at it as well. No, I have lost a lot of fucking challenges, so I, I still shit myself, but however, <laughs> this one I'm not. OK. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't drop that plate in case you make I it want, look better. <laughs> now, fuck <laughs> Here you go. Oh. So there's the green dish. OK. Bon appétit. Oh. Mm. Mm. Very tender. Mm. The pastry is so crispy. Oh, Seasoning mm. is mm. superb. Mm. Mm. And you can taste the mushroom as well. The mushrooms with duck cells. I want another bit of meat. Mm. <laughs> I want a bit of the pastry. Okay. Yeah. It looks a bit thrown on the plate, doesn't it? Does, it certainly yes, doesn't yeah. have the presentation. Meat's the overcooked. One. As nowhere near as. Um, Chainsaw or anyone? You can't actually taste the meat. There's loads, so many other flavours. But I like the time flavour. Mm. Well, I think the time... Inside it. I think the time overpowers bit. everything else. Nervous? Nervous for you. I don't know how you're going to live it down. So, well, I know, but, I mean, <laughs> proof okay. of the flavour. Yes? Yes. Um, is this man going to stay single for the rest of his life or has he got a chance of pulling a bird that actually enjoys his food? I'm going to tell you. So, um, actually, it might be hard, but the, the overall winner yes. for today is... Yes! Yes! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, get in there. Was it, um... Did I get eight? Um, was it a close score or was it...? No, actually, five out of five for you. Five out of five? Yeah. Get in there! I'm taking a mickey. Five yes. out of five? Yeah, yeah, but yours was a pile of shit, so... <laughs> five out of five. Uh, I can live with that. Well done, big boy. Thanks yeah, so now nice. do me a favour. Yeah, stop cooking and fuck off out <laughs> of the kitchen. Yes? Thank you. Take care. That sucks. Oh, yeah. Glasses out, yes. Pipe back there. Ready, guys, here we go. 
Come thanks. behind Stuart with the four, yes? Yes, yes. Thanks, Cheers, mate. Thank you. Come on, come on, guys. Yeah. You can do so, don't you? Yeah. Biscuits. It's biscuits, biscuits, biscuits. Yeah. And look. Chocolate. OK. Glasses on the plates. 11. 11, yes. Come here, now. Gap. Right, OK, good. Table 11, please, ladies. Go. Okay, go. Thank you. Two seconds. It was just, it was very light and fluffy, but there was also some crunchiness. It was like a, a very sexy Malteser. I think it finished the meal off perfectly. It wasn't cold, so it was a little bit angel delighty, a little bit. It was kind of soft and warm and, no, it's a bit nothingy. So I wasn't a great fan of it, really. I loved it. I could have carried on eating that until tomorrow morning non-stop and probably just had 20 minutes to go and lie down and then carry on again. It was bloody brilliant. Jean-Baptiste. Hi, Gordon. Yeah. OK, good. Results for the dessert? Yes, so... Now, I know um, we're slightly slow, however. Yeah. yeah. We weren't uh, missing that little final drive, that little bit of oomph right for the end. 12 people are not paying for the chocolate mousse. Really? Yeah. 12? 12, yeah. Why so many? Too simple. Too simple. Yeah, too, too simple. simple. Too simple desserts. So when a sophisticated, really smart summer tart, then a really nice, rich duck, and a yeah. nice, light chocolate mousse. And they said that was too simple. Yeah, clearly, clearly too simple. Just the mousse with the, you know... Yeah, well, let me tell you something. I think they're slightly fucking simple. That mousse was perfect. Yeah. Yes? Let's just sum up the night, yeah? Yeah. The tart. 24 customers refused to pay for the tart. Yeah. But then you pulled it back miraculously in a way that only three customers didn't pay for the fucking main course, which was brilliant news. And then the big kick in the bollocks, I think, was the 12 that didn't pay for the fucking delicious, simple chocolate mousse. So that means 111 plates that we served tonight were paid for, and 39 refused to pay. That's not good. You know, it's not fucking diabolical, but it's along the fucking mediocre level. Yeah. Serious? Yeah. And I'm not here for fucking mediocre. Now clear down, yes? And let's get fucking home, yes? Yep. Yeah? Indeed. Back to our day jobs, yes? Yes, chef. Little polish on the stove, please, yes? Yeah. Yes, chef. Yes? Thank you. Welcome to the F word. On the menu tonight, crab rolls with a fresh mango salsa, beef fillet with mushroom gratin, and a foolproof hot chocolate fondant, all simple and delicious recipes that you can cook at home. Plus, John Thompson gets me to try his favourite tipple. Oh, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. <laughs> and it's time to say goodbye to my pigs. I'm not very happy to see you girls go. Ladies, Hello. good evening, Charlotte. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Sarah. Hello. How are you? Sam. Hi. Annette, how are you? Fine, thanks. Four farmers' daughters, yes? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Cooking at home for dinner party may sound somewhat glamorous, but cooking for 50 customers is yeah. a different level altogether. The most important thing is making sure that every customer pays for every plate that we send. Yeah. yeah. And if it's not right, I'm not going to send it. Yeah. Okay? Okay. I want to see a little bit of inbuilt standards. And if you're not happy with it, don't bring it to me. Because okay. if yeah. you're not happy with it, how the fuck are the customers going to be happy with it? Yeah, exactly. Don't let me down. And more importantly, don't let yourselves down. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Let's go. Right. On order, four covers, table four, four crab mayonnaise, four fillet of beef, four chocolate fondant. Yes, yes sir. Sir. Thank you. Are you taking right. that one, girls? No. Yeah. Excuse me. Are you doing that one, girls? You want to run it now? No. No. I'll tell you who's doing okay. what. If I had to leave it to you to decide what's going on, trust me, yeah? Yes, sir. There'll be a fucking combine officer coming up in <laughs> fucking Thames by the time you get out. Trust me. I'll tell you what to do. OK. OK? My name is Sarah and I'm very used to very kind of homely cooking. It'd be your stews, it's your pies, it's your meat and your potatoes. What you'd imagine would feed a family of four, generally you'd feed one farmer. My name's 
of Charlotte. I've always shot, and it's really satisfying to see something that you've shot that day and actually see someone sit down eating it and enjoying it. My name's Sam. My favourite meals to cook would be uh, steak and chips. I like the steak to be hung, usually about 21 days, and the more fat that's on it, the better the flavour it gives the meat. My name's Annette. I can draw birds, I can take their innards out and get them oven ready. I'm not squeamish when it comes to handling a bit of raw meat. Farmers work on tight time scales as much as the chef does. You can't stop the sheep popping out the lambs, can you? you just got to get on with it. When we say we're going to do something, it will get done. We want to win. I don't like to lose. <laughs> Tonight's meal kicks off with crab rolls with a mango salsa, the perfect summer starter. Quickly, ladies, please, yes. Make sure they roll them nice and tight, OK? I don't want them all bursting everywhere, OK? Right. For some bizarre reason, I don't know why, but yours looks terrible, yeah? yeah. Not nice at all, okay. yeah? But they're not, they're, not, they're not even closed yeah, up. Chef. Take them back, please, yeah? And start again, yes? Yes, yeah, Chef. Yeah, Sarah. you got to... Let me show you one again. Look, fresh picked crab meat, yes? Yes. It's nicely chilled. Little touch of chilli. Touch of shallot. And then a touch of mustard and mayonnaise. Mix that in. Good. Now, roll it nice and tightly. Yes? The idea is to sort of almost like a spring roll, yeah? Yes, sir. Something nice and neat that you can pick up with the fingers. Then you get your mango salsa, which combines mango, chili, red onion, lime juice, and mint leaves. Just a cutter in there, just to keep it nice and sort of positioned. And then we can sit sort of one roll. Don't squash it madly, just down nicely. Now, there we go, yeah? If that's all open, look, that one goes, they pick up that there, you know, yes, look, sir. that's yep. what's going to happen. Yes, chef. Yeah, come on, let's go. Come on, ladies, this is fantastically simple. So, something this simple has to be perfect when we go out, yes? Yes, chef. Thank you. Annette, are you happy with those? Annette. Yes, chef. Yeah, would you pay for them? Yes, chef. Yeah, so would I. Let's go. Table four, please. Wait. It was really good. I really enjoyed the salsa. It was really fresh and tasty. Nice crunchy lettuce. The salsa wasn't too strong. And it was, it was quite simple. It was something we could all make at home, probably. So, yeah, yeah I enjoyed it. John, how are Hello. you? Hello. Good. good to see you well. Very well. Yes, nice to see you. Good evening. Did you enjoy your starter? Very much. Yes. Very light. Coriander and mint in there. Nice. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, nice and fresh. Yeah, lovely. But I love yeah. seafood anyway. Yeah. I like to with a crab yeah. and a lobster. Yeah. I didn't realise you were such a big foodie because you're quite obsessed about real good food. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Is it something you grew up with? Or is it just you enjoy new experience? So, I think it's something that I've. I, went on, I remember living on my own. Really. And uh, Carolina Hearn came to see me. Uh huh. And um, she went and said in her stand-up, John Thompson's lost it. Because I, I went round to his bed set and he was steaming vegetables. Ste <laughs> yes, that, that's that. A northerner steaming vegetables is you've lost it. Yeah, I don't think about you steaming vegetables though. You don't look like a steamed vegetable. Well, that's man. cooking for one, you see, and that put me off. But what it is, when you get in a relationship, that's when you start to cook yeah. because you want to please your partner yeah. and see the reactions, and then you take it further dinner yeah. parties. Yeah. So were you uh, having a date with Caroline when she came around? Was it? No, not at all. No, 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 no romance. Did you ask but, back for no, I was cooking for myself. She was okay. just coming round. Caught me. Mid steam. Okay, mid steam. <laughs> now, are you feeling confident about the recipe challenge? Fairly. Yeah. Yeah, fairly. Where's the recipe from? Recipe from a bit, bit of my mum. Yes. Bit of good housekeeping. Yeah. Bit of family circle. Uh -huh. And a bit of me. Yeah. Yeah. Are you excited about it? I am excited about cooking. Yeah. Any last minute changes or? Well, I thought about caramelised apples with pork, but I've oh, pulled it out. Yeah. Good. I pulled that. I've not knocked okay. that one on the I'm air. Fucking whip your ass. Go. Before, go, yes. go. I'll go. See you in the kitchen see later. See you later. Yes. Okay. All right, mate. Jean Baptiste. Hey, Gordon. Okay, what was the feedback? It went very well. It went very well. 48 people are paying for the starter. 48? That's fantastic. fantastic news. Yeah, fantastic news. Fantastic news. 48? Yeah. So two non -payers. So only two customers refused to pay for the starters? Yeah. Well done. Yes, sir. Well done. Now, don't fuck up the main course, yes? No. 50 sir. out of 50 for the main course. Okay? Because okay. Chef. Yeah. Next on the menu, a fantastic homegrown food delicacy. I was 16 years of age when I had my first snail experience, and to be honest, I've been hooked ever since. They are absolutely delicious. The problem being, of course, the snails I've eaten have all been bloody French. The brigade cook a sumptuous beef fillet with mushroom gratin, and the big mouth takes on the big supermarkets. Sainsbury's tried it, they stocked it, and then they dropped it.
welcome back to the F word. Pans on for the beef, get the beef out, get them coloured. Beef in, let's go. Get that pan piping hot, yes? Yes, chef, yes, chef. Right, next challenge for this lot, main course. A fantastic fillet of beef with a mushroom gratin. <laughs> fillet of beef. That has to be the ultimate indulgence. When you bite into that, it actually melts on your tongue like butter. The flavour is phenomenal. Mushroom gratin, shallots, garlic. Crush it like that. Because what it does now, it releases the flavour, but it's not too strong. Mushrooms. Chestnuts just cut into quarters. The chestnuts have got that really nice, light, woody texture. The shiitake have got a really nice, heavy, rich flavour. And then you've got this delicate, dainty oyster mushroom that is phenomenal. Season. The garlic, that's it, job done. Take the mushrooms out. Cream. Egg yolk. Chives. Don't start slicing the thick end. There's no flavour there. The chive flavour is at the end there. Nice oniony flavour. Look, beautiful. That's it. Cooking the fillet steak could be a little bit precious with this because it's a delicacy and it's not lined with lots of fat. Colour it, but don't brown it too much, otherwise it goes dry. Touch of salt and pepper. In. And look at it. Yes, it's sumptuous. Yes, it's expensive, but boy, is it worth it. That is perfect. Be generous. Parmesan. In the oven she goes. Hot oven, seven minutes. Looks like a meal for six there, look. Beautiful. Oh, my God. That has to be the perfect indulgence. I just want to die and fuck off to heaven with my fillet steak. Beef fillet with mushroom gratin, done. Ladies. Let's be honest, we had a really easy starter. Yes, yes? Sir, yeah. Now we're going to turn up the heat a little bit, yes? Yes, yes sir. So I want the steaks nice and pink, not medium, yes? Yeah, not well done. Nice and pink, yes? Yes, yes chef. Let's go. Charlotte. Yes, chef. Yeah, five, yeah? Pan yes, on. Yes, chef. Sarah. Yes, Sarah, the pan's not hot, you're going to boil the steak. Make sure it's piping hot, yes? Yes, chef. Yes? No pan yet, chef. Sarah? Yes, they're chef. They're not even seasoned. Sarah. Yes. Come on, get them out of the pan, they're not even seasoned. Now you're going bland, OK? We don't do bland. No chance. Sam? Yes, chef. You've got to speed up now, yes? Yes, chef. Get those steaks out of there. Yes, chef. Yeah, OK. Get a little bit more colour on there, a little bit more colour. Okay, Every steak's different, so touch it and understand it. Do you understand? Yes, we want to serve them pink. Yes, yeah? yes Just chef. above rare, so touch it and understand it, yes? yes? Once the steaks are in, OK, start your potatoes, yes? Just put it out there. I just said to you both. You know what mushrooms Thanks. do. What, what are they to you then, Charlie? You tell me. You're a bright girl. They're mushrooms, chef. Yeah, but they're burnt, darling. They are, chef. Charlotte. Yes, chef. You know how to cook a mushroom, surely. Sure. Yes, chef. You do, yeah? Yes, chef. Pans on for the potatoes. Yes, yeah, start off with the olive oil, yes? yes and chef. then you finish with a little bit of fresh butter at the end, yes? Do you want to be a little bit more brown than this? Yeah, a little bit more browner, yeah, yes, but chef. not 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 burned, yes? Yes, chef. Chef, these sun chef here. Mm. Stop, put it down. No, take it off the heat. You burnt it again. Huh? No, it's all burnt. Fucking hell. They're burnt as well. Come on, we're, we're going a little bit pear shaped now. Yeah? And Once the mushrooms are cooked, make the gratin by folding them together with the egg yolk, chives, and cream. The gratin mixture yeah, acts as a bit of a sauce. Okay? So that's why we keep it nice and wet, but not too wet, okay? For obvious reasons. Right, in the oven. Yes. Yeah, a little bit of uh, cheese on top. Yes, chef. Good. In the oven. Those potatoes look fantastic. Right, watch. Up into the centre. Yes, Just to the yes. left of the centre. Yeah? Yes, Chef. Right, you do the next two. Yes, Chef. Yeah. Let's go. Now, put it on the plate with a little bit of finesse, yes? Yes, Chef. Presentation is crucial. Yes, chef. Service, please. Wait. Yes, Chef. I don't know if they're done. I've no idea. Sarah, what do you think? Tell me, I've no idea. Yeah, they look all right. I don't think they are. Plate. Let's go. Me, Four, yes? Yes, Chef. Let's go. Right, two plates. Yeah. So you dress two, dress two, yeah? Let's go. Yes, Chef. I'm a dressing chef. Right, Sam, you happy with that? Yes, Chef. Yeah. Let's go. 
Oui. Chef Now, it's almost time to say goodbye to my pigs. It's D-Day. My two Berkshire pigs, Trini and Susanna, have lived in my back garden now for the last two months. But today, they're going to the abattoir. I've raised the pigs myself to ensure the pork I'll serve in the F-word restaurant is of the highest quality. But this morning, my mind isn't on the recipes. Every morning, the pigs run over to greet me, but today, for the first time, they've stayed in bed. It could be the rain, but I suspect somehow they know what's happening. Out we come. Hey. Come on. Don't do this to me now. Come on. Luckily, experienced pig breeders, Christine and Kevin, are on hand to help. They're just, like, docile this morning, no? Yeah, well, they don't want to come out in this weather. Huh? They probably know as well. They probably sense everybody's anxiety. Do you reckon? Yeah. They pick up those things... They, so... pick up, they pick up on that very, very quickly. Yeah. Come on, girlies. Thank you. Good there you girl. Go. There you go. There you just go. go backwards. They should hey. just follow you. Come on. You battle. I haven't okay. fed the girls for 12 hours, as the slaughterhouse demands empty Go stomachs. On. There you go. Good girl. Come on, ladies, go. this way. Good girl. She's seen another one. Good girl. Bye, piggies. Bye, piggies. OK, guys. Right, school time. Let's go. I think it's worse for Gordon because he's got to go to the slaughter and carry it through. I think he's going to be really quite, quite upset. That was difficult, that no? I've chosen this small family-run abattoir as it caters for the independent breeder. It's owned by John Andrews, who's been a slaughterman since he was 18. Hello. Morning. How are you well? Not too bad, thanks. Yeah? Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, first time in an abattoir. Is it? Uh, yeah, Christ. Oh, well. The first thing you've got to do is knock them out. Yeah. Put them into a fit. Yeah. And then what happens is I must get them up quick, because everything dies by the knife in a slaughterhouse. Right. All right, so we've got to do it so it's humanely and they don't, they're unconscious. Come on, ladies. Come on. There we go. There you go. I'm not very happy to see you girls go. Yes? So I think it's... I think it's sad, and I think it's very, very, very unfair, but you're going. Hey, just think of all those good times we had. Come on. I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Jesus. Um, it's fucking hard saying goodbye. I just want to get this next bit over and done with. Just not looking forward to it and just hope it's fucking rapid. Gordon, Gordon, table five, like. he's, he's uh, not good enough. Huh? Fucking hell, table five. Charlotte, yes, come yes. here quickly. It's supposed to be pink, yeah, not fucking raw. Just look at that there. Look, I said pink. Right, chef. Yes? Yes, chef. Yes, That's chef. what I said, but you've got to keep them together in the yes, pan chef. and turn them evenly, yeah? Yes, chef. One more steak in there quickly, yes? Yes, chef. Okay. Stay tidy, ladies, yes? Nice and tidy. Go, first two. Last three, go. Hot tray, clear down. Let's go, please. Wait. Fucking hell, that was hard work, man. That was like pulling teeth, you know. I'd rather milk a fucking thousand cows. Table 12, go. Steak was perfect for me. Really nice chunk. Great mushrooms, brilliant. Don't need anything more. Perfect, perfect for me. Loved it. Greasy, really greasy potatoes. Um, I, there, was, there was an oil on the plate which seemed completely irrelevant. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, the, the beef was very tender, very kind of soft. I mean, you hardly needed a knife to even cut it. The mushrooms on top, I don't even like mushrooms, but brilliant. OK, results for the main course. Yes, John Baptist. Uh, feedback from the customers? What was the feedback? Quality of the beef was exceptional. Yeah, quality was good, yeah. but we still have 24 people who are not paying for the, for the beef. That's just under half the dining room. Yeah, Why? it's only half of the dining room, yeah. One was raw. Yes. yes. OK, Hands the main up. problem is uh, the waiting time. Too long. The waiting time? Yeah. Oh. The, the potato was too greasy. The potato is too greasy? Yeah, too soggy. They have sautéed potatoes. Uh, I know, but it's too much, too much Did oil. you drain the potatoes yes, before sir. we put them on the plate? Yes, yes sir. Why did we drain them, Sarah? To remove all the grease. I'm slightly pissed off about that. Yeah, it's not good, huh? I can understand about the one, fine. And then when they went out, the customer didn't want it, but 24? Yeah. Fondant of chocolate, I want 50 customers paying for it. Yeah. Stations, yeah? Let's yeah, do it sure, together, yeah? Sure. Let's go. 
Now, brace yourself. Here comes the biggest gob in the food world. Do you eat veal? No. 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 I think that we just don't like eating baby animals. I believe in the way that the animals are reared and cared for isn't, isn't probably that humane. I keep seeing that calf's face. Well, the thing is, most foodies have got it wrong. Their reasons for not eating veal are more down to ignorance than common sense. Because if you actually stop and think about it for a minute, it's crueler not to eat veal than to actually eat it. The fact is, people are just so extraordinarily ill-informed about veal. Ten years ago, the animal rights crowd persuaded an awful lot of us that veal had to mean baby calves in crates condemned to a short and miserable life. I want to reassure all those viewers who still might be clinging to the idea that being a veal calf in Britain is a miserable existence. I want to prove them wrong. In Britain, veal crates were banned 16 years ago. So what is rosé veal? Rosé veal is veal that's been reared with access to daylight, access to roughage, room to move around. That's why the meat is much pinker, hence the name rosé. People think that's, it's better for being white, but I don't believe it is any better. But what about lamb? I mean, how old is lamb when it's slaughtered? Well, it's about four months old. It can be as young as four months. And how old are these? Six or seven months. I'm sure the public think that crook veal is a cruel process. And certainly British rosé veal isn't. We need to start backing farmers like Mike because the ban on live veal exports has just been lifted, which means that little dairy calves can now be exported to the continent. I'm going to start my support for British veal now by getting stuck into one of Mike's veal chops. Do I look like desperate, Dan? Well, this is like... The, <laughs> this, honestly, Mike, this is the biggest chop I have ever seen. All I've done is season it and I've put some thyme on it. So where do you sell most of the veal that you do? A lot of the veal goes direct to hotels, uh, specialist uh, shops, outlets, uh, because the supermarkets aren't really interested in a, in a small niche product. But that's ludicrous. Here we have this homegrown organic product that they're not willing to take a chance of. Right. I can feel a rant coming on. Supermarkets get right up my nose. None of the big four even stock British rosé veal. It's a disgrace. Well, I've got the full agitprop kit. Well, I've been on a protest for bloody decades. I was born in that anti-Vietnam demonstration. I made signs and I marched on the American embassy. But when the police charged us, I jumped over the hedge and ran away. Doesn't fit. The reason why I'm pitching my stall in front of Sainsbury's is because of the big four supermarkets, they were the only ones intelligent enough to sell British Rose Veal. Sainsbury's tried it, they stocked it, and then they dropped it. And now, the only major supermarket chain that actually sells Rose Veal is Waitrose. So I'm hoping to make a bit of a protest outside Sainsbury's, but also to persuade people, why not give it a go? I don't want to start off with anyone too stroppy. Excuse me. Oh, right, that wasn't a very good start. Not exactly Oxford Street, is it? Oh, excuse me. You, yeah. Hi, Janet. Wow, well. free meat. People are not buying British veal, which is reared in completely humane conditions. Do you know what veal is? It's something to do with insides. No, <laughs> it is not something oh to do with God. insides. <laughs> Try a little bit for me. Just tell me what you think. It's lovely. It's lovely. It's OK, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. It's nice. Is it nice? Yeah. It's just like <laughs> normal. So you can get it in white rows even now? Yeah, get it in white rows now. All oh, right, I'm going to go and buy some. Uh, Thank you. you. Okay, this is the bottom line. Stop listening to all those lies, all those myths, all those half truths, and just simply pay attention to me. 
British feel tastes delicious. Persuade your local supermarket to buy it, please. Look, the idea of eating beer was abhorrent to me before really? I saw it, but British farmers, no cages, nothing, and... So it did change your mind? Definitely, definitely. Do you want to have a taste? I will, and it's going to be my first time, so... And I do so that very, very, never, really never, never, ever, ever, because of that one reason, so... Hi, Janet. Hi. How's that gone down? It's gone down very well. Uh -huh. I've got one woman, she's thinking about it. She's I've converted everybody else. Really? It um, tastes great, doesn't it? Do you know what? The most exciting thing about this kind of veal, you can serve it pink. Yeah, everyone thinks that veal has to be cooked like pork, whereby yeah. it's got to be medium or well done. Pink veal is perfect. That's lovely. Fascinated with your protests. Uh, they went down well. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. people do see me and cross the other side of the road, a bit like they do with you, Gordon. <laughs> it's a feeling you must know. <laughs> no, no, darling, they you cross frightened. towards me, they don't cross against me. No, Gordon, yes. they're trying to you and they're frightened of me. But I managed to persuade people to eat real. Janet, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Next on the menu, I tell John Thompson about my pigs. Trini and Susanna. Is that what they're called? Yes. Are they all right with that? What? Well, the pigs are fine, they're very happy. Yeah, OK. See, he does the gags. I did the cookie. And the brigade tackled my favourite dessert, hot chocolate fondant. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time to find out if John Thompson is as good at cooking as he is at eating. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Let's go, big boy. Nervous? Swearing. Now, you're a big foodie, yes? Yes. Huge appetite, because you enjoy food. I do. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing making a sausage pie? I just didn't expect you to come in with a sausage pie recipe. Keep it simple, that's Keep why. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, yeah. So, what's the secret behind the recipe? Uh, decent pastry. Yes. Nice short crust, uh -huh. not flaky. And also, it's just what you put in them sausage meat, really. So, what's the first thing you do? Roll out your pastry. I'm rolling my pastry out first, mm -hmm. because I'm going to blind bake that, and there's a reason for that. So, John's lining the bottom of his dish with a pastry. I'm going to start searing my sausages off. They're really nice, flavoursome sausage. a really nice, rich Cumberland sausage. I'm just colouring the sausages, and then I'm going to take them out of the pan and cut them into little sort of slices. So it's a bit of a... almost like a sort of sausage pie stroke casserole. Now, uh, John, you're baking it with clean film at the bottom. That's to stop the pastry rising. A lot of people will be scared of putting clean film in the oven. It's something I only recently learned, to be honest. I... But it works brilliantly. Where is my oven? Good. Right now, sausage, mate. Good. What you like it, diced in onions? Speed of those. Go on, <laughs> what do you think? Now, what is that? That's my diced onions. How did... But Not bad, eh? They're all immaculate diced. Yeah, you, I know. You've done them so fast. Yeah, exactly. Show me. <laughs> she... Right. What is this, the lazy fuckers kitchen Absolutely. Wear? <laughs> no wonder you're so fucking fat. You've, you were 17 stone, you've I just I was 17 down. stone. I went to a health spa and this girl said, oh, you're that bloke with the monkey, and I thought she meant cheeky monkey from Alan Partridge, and she didn't. She meant Johnny Vegas with monkey. <laughs> anyway, she said, we sign your autograph here? I said, gladly. I went, what's your name? Karen. Karen, get some fucking glasses, good <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> While the pastry case bakes, I'm softening off the spring onions, and the onions just in butter, and then, while that's softening, uh, in the sausage meat, I'll put black pepper, English mustard, and some Worcester sauce. I could have gone for Cumberland sausage meat, but it, I didn't want to go for too much sage, because it can taste a bit medicinally. Hey, good for your sperm count. Is it? Oh, yes. Well, that's good, because I'm going for IVF at the moment. Oh, really? Yes. I'll have to have a... I've got oh, some sage soup later. Serious? Yeah. Uh, Tan and I had a, a, a tough time, you know, before we started sort of, um, you know, planning children, and so we went through all those stages, which is quite a... quite a pressure between your cells in terms of, you know, you want a large family, and there's several complications you're facing, and I went to the doctors and they told me I had a very low sperm count. Did you? And then yeah. you've got that humiliating part where you've got to go into the room with your magazines, it's like, fuck, you know... Oh, I yeah, well, I had that yesterday. Huh? 
Serious. I don't need cheese at the mags, but I'm bringing my own next time. <laughs> <laughs> I've just sealed my Cumberland sausages, and here I've got my celery, my onions, and my bacon. And now I'm just going to put in a touch of seasoning, Worcester sauce in. Now you haven't now, told me what have you bought this down for? Are you going to return my garden? Go. He's trying to make the pastry go up. I'm going, just going back in the cupboard. <laughs> it's like sleeping in the garden with my pigs, huh? Trini and Susanna. Is that what they're nice. called? Yes. Are they all right with that? What? Well, the pigs are fine. They're very happy. Yeah, OK. They're very good. Uh, very good. <laughs> See, he does the gags. I did the cooking. But what have you brought it for? I've got a wheatgrass <laughs> juicer there, and that's my own from home. But we're not going to drink that, are no, we? No, but that is the equivalent of... A, a pound of fresh wheatgrass is the equivalent of 23 pounds of garden veg. So you, what I'll do is I'll juice them, we have a shot of it. <laughs> Stop watching QVC, will you, and turn <sighs> over, yes? I didn't get this on QVC. It was a wedding present. <laughs> a wedding present. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Would you do me a favour? Yeah. Would you go first? Of course, but I like I'll, it. I'm all right with it. Licorice. I'm I not think. too sure if you're winding me up. Okay. So just swallow. That's it. It's not that bad. It's not going to turn me into some fucking vegetarian. Is it going? Don't you think there's a hit of licorice there? Afterwards, not that bad. Oh, <laughs> I can't handle it. I can't <laughs> handle it. <laughs> <laughs> it's that fat. You think it's, it's that... fucking disgusting. And you it's so it on this show. It's so sweet. You think, do you not like it? Oh, Christ almighty. I can live with that. A kilo of vegetables for that. Yeah, absolutely. And vegetables on top. <laughs> huh? Has it stained my tongue? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, look at that. that. Look. Then, a few more spoons of my onions, bacon, Celery. Now that needs this pastry on top. God, just put it together now reminds me so much of my mum's Sunday lunch because that's what we'd sit down and eat every other Sunday. I'm putting a pie crust on, but slightly skew with. <laughs> I've just got. I'm going to have to so try and shift this now that way a bit. Ooh. <laughs> John, you know yeah. I said they are blind tasters, but they're not literally blind, you know? Okay, they have, yeah. they have they not? sight. Oh, really? <laughs> so just put a nice um, oh. egg wash on top of the pie. Rock salt, pepper, and thyme flowers. Right, big boy, are you ready for the oven? Uh, I've just got a glazed mine and then we're in. So, <laughs> oh, I forgot something. I've put some, a little oh, bit no, of thyme in the top. No, bollocks, you just seen mine. No. New no, me now. I saw it on Delia. said, all right, I'll fucking leave it as it is. Delia? Yes, you put some okay. thyme and put out the poking out the sprig out the top. Serious? Yeah. Right, here we go. In you go. 20 minutes? 30. Good luck, big boy. OK, thanks. Right, dessert. Now, this is my favourite dessert. Chocolate fondant. Right. Eggs and sugar. Yeah. yeah. Whisked up. That's nice and firm. It gives a really nice texture to the fondant chocolate. This is the best quality chocolate, OK? The better the chocolate, OK, the better the fondant. Yes, yes, now, sir. from there, OK, just make sure it all melts down nicely. Yes? yes sir. In. Yes, to the eggs. Yeah? Now, yes, once that's in, we start whisking all the chocolates evenly. Distributed across flour, it's been sifted. Yes, yeah? sir. Now, you don't throw it all in there. One third, one third, and one third, okay? Yes, sir. And what happens now, it starts to thicken up, okay? But you don't knock all the air out of it, you just fold it in. Yes, sir. Yes, the sir. important part is keeping it really nice and liquid in the centre, yes, okay? Sir. Now, if they come out undercooked, they'll collapse. Okay. If they come out overcooked, they'll be dry. So keep them nice and wet. Moulds. They've been buttered, yes? Yes, sir. Okay, they've been buttered okay. and dusted okay. in cocoa powder, yes, that's sir. right. Yeah? Okay, three quarters full all the way up. Three yeah. quarters, sir. That's right, because it rises off and in. <laughs> Try and get that in one, okay? Right, let's go, ladies, Thanks, yeah? Thanks, let's go. One of your whisks is free. Yeah. Chocolate on the melt, quickly, let's go. Mold's already done. Yeah. Now, make sure you've got no water in there, OK? Yeah. Yeah, if you put water into chocolate, yeah, it makes it get all grainy and it sort yeah. of seizes up, yeah? Yes, sir. OK. So, work it, OK? Yes, sir. Yeah? You've got big biceps, work uh -huh. it. Ladies, make sure you always put an extra one in there. We don't want the customers to find out that they're overcooked. That's your job. Yes? Yes, sir. So, that's why we put an extra one in there, OK? So, when they come out, you can taste them. 
And if it's perfect, they'll be talking about it for years, yes? Tonight's brigade may be slow, but they're a damn sight quicker than this lot. I was 16 years of age when I had my first snail experience, and to be honest, I've been hooked ever since. They're absolutely delicious. The problem being, of course, the snails I've eaten have all been bloody French. Now, are the Brits actually better at producing snails than the French? And more importantly, as a nation, why aren't we eating such delicacies that are on our doorstep? And if they're not on your doorstep, they must be in the fucking back garden. David Bailey Bellew retired from the police force three years ago and has been farming snails ever since. And how many snails have you got here all together? This place can do two and a half tons a year. God. It's labour intensive. Very labour intensive. I can spend five to six hours a day in here. I will use several hundred gallons of water God. every day in here. While David works his ass off rearing the little buggers at a rate of a quarter of a million a year, his wife Maura can barely make enough garlic butter to keep up. I've never had a British snail yet, you know that. I've always been using the French. Here you go. Mm. I'm amazed at the texture, the flavour, and I have to say they do taste just as good as the French right. in a way that they're, uh, they're a lot sweeter. We've got no reason to be squeamish about them, have we? No, no, no. they're lovely, aren't they? And, and is it to do with sort of, uh, I mean, you've seen them in the back garden? Yes. Um, so you shouldn't eat them, which is crazy. Well, people uh, put slug pellets down and poison them and yeah. what have you, and then go to a restaurant and order half a dozen and, yeah. and pay a lot of money for that yeah. when they can eat what's in their garden. The snails David farms are the same variety as those found in your garden. Now, there's clearly millions and millions of farm snails, but what excites me more than anything, the fact that you can actually eat the snails from your back garden. And obviously, eating things that are wild are far tastier from a chef's point of view than something farmed. Now, rumour has it they like coming out in the wet, hence the reason why I'm fucking watering the garden for the first time ever. I'm going to give you five pence per snail yeah. if you find them, OK? Five <gasps> pence. There. Wait, 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 wait. Look, there's one there. Have you got one, Hal? Yeah, but there's thousands more. Well, I want the bucket up to there. You've got 20 pence, 15 pence, 10, 15, 20, what about 25? You can't eat garden snails immediately. You need to ensure any toxins they may have consumed are purged from their system. For the first two days, leave the snails without any food and regularly wash them. On day three, give them a carrot and leave them for a couple of days until you see their drop-ins turn orange. Finally, wash the snails again and place them in the fridge in a sealed container. The cold will send them into a deep, deep sleep. Say goodbye to these little buggers and send them in there for a bath. What frustrates me now when you see these in the pan is the fact that I pay a fortune for snails and they're sort of free-range, wild, organic snails from southwest of France. The fact that I've got all these snails in my bloody back garden and I'm not paying a penny for them, we can finally say goodbye to the French. Drain. Get your tweezers and pick the tail. Now look at that. Small, sweet and beautiful. Right, with these snails now, I want to sort of up the tempo a little bit. And yes, they're wild and they're from the back garden and they look delicious, but I want to get away from that garlic butter. So this is the most amazing sort of smoked pancetta. And get it nice and crispy. I think we're on the verge now of discovering the most amazing delicacy. Yes, from fucking Wandsworth. Some fresh sage. Snails in. Saute them. Now, to finish the snails, I'm going to put some fresh parsley in there. Fresh lemon juice. A little bit of olive oil. That, now, is ready for the salad. I just want the salad lightly dressed because that's been the big problem with snails. They've been heavily doused with lots of garlic butter. I want to keep it nice and light. And it smells amazing. The sage has got that really nice sort of sweet, spicy flavour. And you've got that crispiness of the bacon. And you've got that really nice fresh lemon juice squeezed all over them. Now, let's just see if we can get to the zoo and convince them that the snails are fucking delicious. Jack! <laughs> Megan! Ready? One, two, three, and... Mm. Lily? Chew then. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. 
Nice and tasty. Nice and tasty. Meg, what does yours taste of? Uh, nice. Nice. Holly? Nice. Even though you've got no teeth in there, can you chew that? Yeah? And Lily, yeah. do you like the snail? Yeah. Yes? Would you like another one? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Amazing. <laughs> right, wait. Let's just check the first one. Annette? Yes, sir. Out into your cloth. OK? And then onto your tray. OK? I want you to test one first, yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah, and tell me if you're happy with it. Lovely. Taste it. Yeah? I'm, I'm so scared. Right. That looks fantastic. Yes, now, sir. Now, we're going to serve these with the most delicious vanilla bean ice cream, yeah? Ice and sugar. Up. OK, don't worry if it goes over the side of the plate. Just tap, tap. Tap, tap. Yeah? Yes, Nicely. Let's go. Gently. Let's go. Careful, careful. Have you done a tester? Chef. Sorry, yes, you, chef. You've tasted it? Yes, chef. You're happy with it? Yes, chef. Good. Let's go. Come on, on the plate. Let's go. Plates out. Gently, gently, gently. Don't lose it now, please, yeah? Let's go. One of those. Tip it in some Sam, how you said? Yeah, let's go. They look fantastic, and we're moving our arse. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, I don't know what... I don't know what's happened, but all of a sudden you're all working fast. Huh? Yes, Chef. Why do we do this earlier? Five and 14, second time, yes? You're making the waiters look slow. Go. Five and 14. Damn. Just open up the... Slide them down, so put the ice cream on there, please. Let me show you. No, you do the last one. Let's go, huh? Let's go. I thought dessert was fabulous. I loved the combination of the warm chocolate combined with the vanilla ice cream. So the warm and the cold combined was really, really great. I love the way it fell away as you're eating it. It was really, really, really nice taste as well. So excellent. Okay, John Baptiste, please. Hey, got it. How'd it go? Okay, very good. Very good. Well, very, very good. Yeah, an amazing dessert. Uh, yeah, 46 people. 46. Uh, yeah, paying for that. Paying. Yeah, it's fucking great. 50. News. So we got yes. four non non pair. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. 46. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah? Okay, let's talk about the figures overall, okay? So two for starter, 24 for main, and four for pudding. That's 30 plates out of 150 not paid for. Yeah? Yeah. But the good news is 120 plates were paid for, and that is quite impressive. You know that? Yeah. That yeah. is very impressive. Sadly, you're not coming back next week. Yeah, okay. But when you do go back to those farmyards, you can hold your fucking heads up high, yes? Thank you. Yeah, you did very well. Now, farmer's daughters? Yes. Yeah, you all enjoy a drink. In the bar. Cheers. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Well done. Well done, well done, well done. Thank you. Thanks. Next on the menu, the results of the recipe challenge. Uh, but there is one clear winner today. Of course, there's always a clear winner yeah. of donut. <laughs> and it's the end of the line for my pigs. Welcome back to the F Word. Time to see a grown man cry. Yes, John Thompson, you're about to lose. Do you think so? Oh, yes, big time. Ready? I don't know. Keep it simple. That's Keep what it I say, simple. Gordon. Right. Spoon away, yes? All right, chop in. Oh, it's cracking up. You've got a nice portion there, John. Yeah? Yep. That's what the girls say. Wee! Ali, uh, Jean Baptiste. Gordon. Take them away. <laughs> yes? Yeah. But it's good, by the way. Thank oh, you. fuck off with him. Yeah. Good luck, John. <laughs> Thank you. This is inspiring today. Wow, that looks That's good. Really impressive. Yeah. Pastry is really flaky. The sausage yeah, is really yeah. soft. Yeah, nice, almost yeah. pappy. Mmm, mm, I'm not. I'm not, not a lover of the sausages. It's very good. Is the pastry nice? Mmm. Vegetables are gorgeous, though. Mmm. No flavour in the sausages. Mm. All the flavours in the sauce. Yeah. yeah. So this looks more like right. something my mum would make. Yeah, yeah. this, this yeah. looks um, I don't like the very stodgy. It looks a bit, it's a bit dry. It tastes really sagey, that one. It's dry, but it's really, really heavy. Mm. It's nicer. I, it's I like solid. this one. 
It needs a gravy or something mm. on, on top, it. Yeah. It, it, it. It's well, a bit, apart from that, the pastry's, the pastry's a bit chalky. Better. Well, I, I don't know. It's a bit chalky. Know. It's definitely really? not but homemade. The sausage meat tastes really, really nice and sagey. Mm, trust me. Are you nervous? Uh, yeah, now I am. You've been the most relaxed and the most chefy orientated guest so far. Well, when you know started, that. I just thought, who's this talking to me? Because I cooked solitary, but then I got I got into it and I loved it. Yeah, natural. I can see it. Okay. Uh, results. Okay, first they like both of them, uh, but there is one clear winner today. Of course, there's always a clear winner. Yeah, your donut. Okay, bravo. Yes, <laughs> get in there. Well done, big boy. Mind. Uh, hey, well done. Yes, cheers. Uh, I, it was a pleasure cooking with yeah, you. Know absolutely. You look yeah. all upset now. No, I'm all right. No, I'm all right. No, I've enjoyed it. That's it. Yes. But you know, everyone wants to win. Yeah, of course they do. <laughs> yeah. Now, fuck off to the kitchen. I will. And go to the we'll sit down. Have a nice glass we'll of wine. See ya. Yeah. Not grass. <laughs> Next week in the F Word restaurant, we've got pork on the menu. So, you know what's going to happen next. And let me tell you, it's not for the squeamish. It doesn't get that messy now, though, does it? No. no. I feel it's my duty no, to witness no, the slaughter of my pigs, but no. it's not something I'm looking forward to. This is a slaughter hole. I feel guilty. I've never been into an abattoir, you know that. Do you? Yeah, but, I've, you know, I've cooked so many amazing things, but I've never fucking been to an abattoir, which is, you know... Well, you're in now. I'm in now, exactly. Where should I stand, uh... What's that in there, John? Fucking hell. That's a blood pit. So That's today's blood. That's today's blood. Got blood pit, hanging rail, scalding tank. Right. Shaving table, and away we go. Yeah. So just run me through exactly. They come through the door. I'm gonna go and get them now. Yeah. Gonna walk them down. Yeah. Walk them in here. Yep. I should put them both in together. Okay, good. All right? Yeah. So I should be stunning one. Once that pig's been stunned enough, it's gonna lay on its side, but it's gonna kick. Right. All right, warn you that now. Yeah. All right? Then I'm gonna put a shackle on. Okay, where does that go? That's gonna go on the back leg, all okay. right? And she's gonna go up on that hoist, yep. onto that blood rail, yep. and then we're gonna lean across and cut her throat. Okay, that's right. one at a time. One at a time. Yeah. What's that? That's the... That's the tongs. The tongs. It's electrothalia stunning. Right. All right? So that tongue there, it's basically gonna put a current between, a, between the brain. Right. All right? And you hear that just to the temple? On the temple. Yeah. Right. That's it. All right, isn't it? Cool, fucking hell. Why are they still moving like that? Is nerves. that just nerves? That pig, if you look at their eye, it's gone. But she's still grunting. It's not grunting, blowing bubbles. See? Nerves. Finished. Fucking hell. Painless. No stress, they walked in, walked in, they didn't know what's happening when I was doing the first one, the other one took the notice. When will they stop moving? See, all that is, that's an involuntary movement. Just... Involuntary. Uh, that animal's got no control over it at all. That's the worst of it. Whew. Fucking hell. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yeah, um... It seemed fast. It seemed like it was, you know, it's weird. You know, they're here one minute and now they're hanging with their throat slit. So, uh, yeah, not pleasant. For the men of the abattoir, slitting the pig's throat is just the start of the process. Then they put Trini and Susanna in a scalding tank that removes hair and several layers of skin. I'm amazed at how white it's come out like that. Unbelievable. The animal is shaved of any remaining hairs, then the pig is disemboweled. Right, so I've loosened that already now. Now we're going to drop that through now. All right, so we're just going down there, break the breastbone. That's it. 
That's your sausage skins. Okay. You know those natural skins? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Just cutting into the back of them. Straight out. Straight out. After the guts comes removing the plug. That's the heart, lungs and liver, all still connected to the tongue. That's the tongue. We have to remove the tongue. That's it. And there's the esophagus. It's an incredibly fast, skilled process. Now the idea is to hang them now and, and sort of dry them for a bit in the fridge. The whole operation is extraordinary. Um, I mean, quite emotional in a way. I felt sick as a fucking dog in there. Um, next, uh, I'll just, you know, think of something really exciting to cook with them in a way that can make me a little bit happier right now, but uh, it's not a nice experience in there. Welcome to the F Word, time to pick out. On the menu tonight, three gorgeous, simple dishes you can cook at home. Scallops with summer truffles, a delicious apple dessert, and a feast of pork, but not any old pork. It's my pigs. Plus, it's a double whammy in the recipe challenge as Hugh and Janet both take me on. That's the hole yeah, that, that hole. the mince meat goes in. Where's the volume it's a little on hole, that? isn't it? And I tried to stop David Williams being a lady about fresh food. Welcome back. Yes? How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Gordon. Stropping acres at home? <laughs> yes. Yeah? Like, fuck for that. Mm, <laughs> nice to see you. Hello. Nice uh, nice good to see you. Good to see, you. see you all. Welcome back. Thank, thank you. you. The best performing brigade. Congratulations <laughs> on that. Thank However, you, you. it wasn't perfect, was it? Last time we had 22 complaints. That was 22 too many. Yeah? Yep. Yes. Yeah, Tonight, we've got the perfect meal, so okay. I want perfect results. All right. 150 okay. plates, all paid for. OK. We've got the most amazing menu. Something I've had in the back garden for months. <laughs> you're cooking know. my pigs tonight. I know. Okay, I know. it means a lot for me. Absolutely. And you've clearly proved you're good, but tonight is the chance to prove you're great. Okay. Yes? Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Let's get cooking All on right. the sections. Let's go. Francesco and Peter here. GB, Lucy over there, yes? All right. So, the salad uh, of roasted scallops with new potatoes is a signature dish. Put the pans on, get the scallops out, and we'll do it together, yes? Okay. Let's start off. How many per? Yep, there we go. I knew you'd be first button in there. <laughs> yeah. Fuck me, have I missed you? <laughs> okay, potatoes. Nice hot pan. That's colouring nicely. Now the scallops. Into the hand and open. We've got curry powder and salt. Two thirds to one third. Back in. And we go round from 12 o'clock. Why do we do that? So that you know where you start it every time. Exactly that, so they're not overcooked. Yeah. Now, it's so important not to overcook scallops. Give them a little shake to make sure they're not sticking. Finger on and turn. They've got a nice colour on there. And look. See the colour? Yeah. Now, touch. They're nice and firm and out. See? You don't get better fast food than that, I can assure you. <laughs> out, look. Summer truffles, yeah? I mean, yeah. amazing. Great delicacy. As they hit the scallop, it cooks the truffle. Oh, yeah. So it perfumes the scallop. Yeah. Yeah. Salad, creamy vinaigrette. And that has to be the best starter. Yeah, in London tonight, look. Yes. Yeah. Okay, ladies, here we go, yes? Oh, boy, yes? Yes, Gordon. Yes, Gordon. Well done, getting this far. Now you're here, make it worthwhile, yes? Yes, Gordon. Okay, on order, four covers table, three, four seeds scallop, four roast pork, four apple dessert. Yes, Gordon. Yes, Gordon. Thank you. Let's go, ladies, yes? Tonight's brigade are Peter, Francesca, GB and Lucy. Oh, shit, sorry, sorry. Fuck you now. Are you all right? Yeah. Last time right? the Amy doctors yeah. were in the but kitchen, they always the blinded too. me, but they were yeah. by far the best of all my amateur way. brigades. What do you want me to say? Well done for fucking them I up. don't want you to say. I want you to say something once, Mr Ramsey, and then shut the fuck up. Take the oil off the stove quickly. Oh, fuck me. What are you doing? For the last three hours, yeah. you've been calling me mate. Gordon. Gordon. James, it'd be greatly appreciated for the next 20 minutes. Gordon. Gordon. I'm not your fucking mate. Right, where's yeah. the scallops? Come over. You've got... No, come on. How many scallops? Five and five, yeah? Please, yeah. Should be good. five and five. Nice, scallops. tight circle. I'm not very good at Yeah, don't go too wide. Come on, ladies, please. Yeah. I can't get any more simple than this, yes? Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Let's go. Go, please. Table three. Peter, Francesca, start your third table. Good. Let's go. GB. Yes, Gordon. Step up a gear, please. Yes, Let's go. Yes, Gordon. The excitement about cooking this at home, yes? Yes. Yeah, you can actually sit down and eat it with your guests. Do you yes, understand? Gordon. It's not something you have to spend fucking three hours in the kitchen for. Right, Lucy, watch. Yep. Creamy vinaigrette. We've got creme fraiche in there. Yes. Chopped truffle. But it's basically the vinaigrette finished with creme fraiche. So it's nice and light. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. That's beautiful. Maximum yeah. amount of salad. Let's go quickly. Okay. Right Please up. go. Table eight. You fill the winning store, yes? The scruffy one, table 14. It's a very messy cook, you know that. Huh? I only have eyes for your cookery, Gordon. Do, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it, Peter. <laughs> Service, please. £7 for that. I'd pay £17 for that. Go. Please, go. Table eight. Let's go. Well done. It's a perfect time of year for a barbecue, and no barbecue is complete without a good pork sausage. Hello, Brian. Hello, Gordon. Good to Hi. see you, mate. Likewise, good to see you too. Time nicely. My pigs, Trini and Susanna, have been hanging for a week. Now my local butcher, yeah. Brian Randall, is going to help me get them ready to cook. The cuts I'll be using for the restaurant are the belly and the loin of pork. The loin is at the top of the pig where the back bacon comes from. I don't want to waste any of my pigs, so Brian is going to make the other bits into mince so I can make my very own sausages for the barbecue. Along here, please. Let's go, Jack, come down. Megan, come down. This is Trini meat. We've got to mix all with our hands. With our hands. Okay. We're adding thyme, sage, apple, yes. onion and whole grain mustard. And for the casing, I'll be using natural sausage skin, Trini's lower intestine. Sausage mix into the machine. Cool, dear. OK. You've got lots of people to feed. Matilda, that big? Uh, bigger. Happy with the size? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you, guys. First time made of sausages. Thank you. Right, let's get ready for the barbecue, yes? How are you? Very well. I'm very good. OK, ladies and gentlemen, your Trini sausages are ready. Lily, large one, medium one or small one? No. There we go. Up. Off you go, my darling. The sausages are going down a storm, but I've saved a special cup for Janet Street Porter. Yeah, you've had all sorts in your mouth, yeah? Yeah. I've got a bit of a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Janet Street Porter, what do you mean, er? <laughs> what do you mean, er? <laughs> that, that, that tail. Trini's tail. <laughs> Have a little taste. Oh, come on. That meat tastes good. Isn't that delicious? Even the towels are getting the thumbs up, but will I win my wager with Hugh? Cheers, man. Cheers. Good, well good health. Thank Thanks. you. Good to see you. A couple of months ago, I bet Hugh that he wouldn't be able to tell which one of my pigs I've been feeding cherry beer and which was beer free. Right, you ready for the taste test, yes? First of all. So this is the loin. This is the tenderloin. Tenderloin. A little bit of liver. Yes. Yep. That's so juicy. Delicious. To I me, mean, that, just, that, that just tastes of quality pork. Very, very good pork. So this is from the other pig, but I don't know which other pig. That's right. If you thought of one plate that had been treated differently with alcohol, which would it be, the red or the blue? I would go for the blue one, because it's tastier. It's just everything, the liver's a bit sweeter and the pork a bit porkier. Yeah. Well, that's extraordinary, <laughs> because the blue plate is no beer. No beer, OK. And the red plate is the beer. was Susanna. Okay. Who got fed the beer? Interesting. Yeah. Hugh got it wrong for the best of reasons. Um, the meat from Susanna, the beery pig, has lost a little of the pork's natural sweetness. Very nice so too. he chose the tastiest, well, but not the beeriest. Well done. That was worthwhile. An experiment. interesting experiment, <laughs> definitely. Um, Time to marinate my son. <laughs> It was the scallops that were, you know, king there, without a doubt. Just fell apart. It had a really wholesome taste to it, and it still had that sort of meaty texture which you look for in a scallop. Considering I don't really eat scallops at all, it was probably the second time I've tried it. So, yeah, it's really good. The presentation was beautiful. Looked lovely. Thought it was a little bit chewy. But um, overall, compliments to the chef. Yeah. Uh, right. Feedback from the scallops. Very good. 49 people have been. 49? Yeah. Yes. A great news. Well done. Fantastic. Yeah, very good. Not total perfection, but it's bloody good. I mean, really good. Now, the next course, yeah, I've really seriously looked after these pigs like you've got no idea. Like having a patient that you fall in love with over the last three months. 
So, you know, the port's going to be a little bit more difficult, but well done. Thank Clear you. down. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you, Gordon. Hello. Hi. I'm so sorry to hear you didn't enjoy your starter. What was wrong with it? Potatoes. Some of the potatoes was a bit harder than the other potatoes. Right. Do I look bothered? No. Because <laughs> 49 customers have agreed to pay for it because they loved it. But I'm looking forward to the next one. <laughs> if you don't pay for the next course, you're going to smash your sunglasses. <laughs> next on the menu, the brigade cook Trini and Susanna's belly and loin. David Williams learns that cooking Sunday lunch means getting your hands dirty. Can I wipe them on your trousers? <laughs> Go on, then, quick. Because you, you, you already <laughs> wiped them, it's fine. And I get tooled up to go hunting. I feel like a fucking action man. Welcome back. Teaching people to cook Sunday lunch has been a real challenge, but Little Britain's David Williams beats them all. I've never actually bought fish from a fishmonger. Serious? No, I've only ever bought it in a packet from a supermarket. Honestly. Is that quite shameful? You swam the channel. I didn't see any fish that day. No. Oh, no, I saw that one, actually. Yeah. Can I hold it? No. Oh. David, <laughs> for fuck's sake, hold it nicely. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Oh, my hands are uh, What else? What else? Oh. Wiping your fingers on your jeans. <laughs> you don't have to wash those jeans, when you? you have to take them straight off when we get home. <laughs> salmon. Well, salmon's nice, but it's a bit boring. It's a bit boring. Yeah, have a lovely, beautiful halibut. Halibut's amazing. Lovely Scottish inshore halibut. I think we'll do. Can you fill it in? Yeah, sure, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. There's nothing better than getting a fishmonger to fill it. No. You're fishing, aren't it? We're so celebrities, so we won't be paying. <laughs> but thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> Oh, there we are. That's disgusting. <laughs> you, can I wash them? Oh. <laughs> Just put them on the back yeah. of your trousers. I'm not doing that. Oh, come on. Can I wipe them on your trousers? <laughs> Go on, then, quick. Because you, you, you already <laughs> wiped them. It's fine. Thank you. David Williams says he's 70% straight. But one thing's crystal clear. He's a lot happier in a dress than he is in the kitchen. I'm going to get him to cook a simple Sunday lunch of halibut and vegetables in red wine. OK, do we need to put the, the aprons on or something? Uh, have you got an apron? I've brought a couple. Your ones, it's a bit more masculine because it's got little dogs on it. It's very camp, no? Your camp? Uh, You're a very, very big camp appeal. Uh, uh, put it on. Uh, oh. Stop misbehaving. You know, a lot of women, when oh. I said I was coming on this show, were very jealous and said they fancied you. Serious. I said that to my mates and they said the same about you, how much they fancy you. Really? <laughs> what, your male friends? Yes. Well, that's no bad thing. No, that's a nice thing. Right, I want you to take the skin off. When was the last time you took the skin off for a fish? Well, I've never taken the skin off. OK. Now, watch. Best thing to do, keep the fish. <laughs> I feel so funny. Just get on with it. I feel, Stop look at this thing here, Just honestly. please, Christ please, almighty. come on, be right. professional. Leave the knife flat and just pull it. Well, so you're just loosening it, really? Just loosening you're not really it. cutting it. Yeah, Shall I do just, that? Absolutely, just slide it through. Oh. I didn't know you were left-handed in the kitchen. I huh? am. That's great. All good chefs are left-handed. Really? Again? Even Jamie also, Oliver. He's right-handed. He's lovely, though, isn't he? Because <laughs> he's kind of got it all, isn't he? <laughs> oh, God, it's going to be a great lunch. Uh, when was the last time we had an actual dinner party? When was the last time you actually threw? Don't know, probably quite a few years ago. Really? And was it successful? No. Right, we're going to cut up some pancetta. What I want you to do is just cut what they call lardons. The garnish are going to be quite straightforward. Um, bacon, mushrooms, roast them all off, OK, and make a bit of a sauce. They're quite fatty, the pancetta. Yeah, they are. So we're going to saute them with no oil. Get these shallots and just sort of cut them in half. Timing's crucial, we know that. Yeah, I know, but that's normally where people come unstuck. Especially with, like, Sunday lunches and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. A lot to do. A lot to do. <laughs> well, I'm doing this! <laughs> You're in touch with your feminine side, aren't you? We are. You are as well, aren't you? No, but all your sketches are all sort of... Basically dressed. dressing up as women. And yeah, that but is that as sort of transvestite, or is that as a...? Just for fun, really. Just for fun. I don't know. I've never dressed up as a woman, you know that? Well, your wife's out. So... <laughs> all her clothes are upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you a thing or two. <laughs> Shallots in there now? Shallots in. In, in. in together, yeah. Some pepper. A little bit of rock salt, please. Sprinkle that with a little bit of sugar now. Yeah, oh. teaspoon, yeah, nice. And what that does now, it starts to caramelise. OK, I want you to tip the mushrooms into there for me. Oh, there's a lot of food, Gordon. OK, now I'm going to open some wine. Give a nice sort of glass in there. A glass. OK, yeah. You, um, you seem to change girls, like seasons in cooking. You know, I go through uh, autumnal, seasonal, then we go on to something lighter. Every time I see you, you're always with a no, new I've girlfriend. I've just got a lot of friends. They're not girlfriends, they're just friends of mine. Um, the perfect girl would be who? My mother. 
<laughs> no, it's a marry. I don't really know. Denise Van Outen would be pretty top of this, wouldn't no, she? I mean, because she's funny and she's very beautiful. No, is she, and is... she's fun. Yes. And lively, yeah. intelligent. Yeah, she, she'd be fun. Stunning. I mean, you've got to think when you're getting married or something, you're going to think, oh, you know, I want to be with this person for yeah. at least six months. So... <laughs> <laughs> the idea now, this fish, is to actually put some colour on there. In we go. Good. Good. Right, that's coming down nicely. Get a spoon, OK, and have a little taste. And just tell me if you think it needs a little bit more seasoning. It's delicious. I don't think it needs any more because... That's, that's perfect. Certainly not salt because that, that um, bacon is very, very salty. Yeah, that's perfect. Nice. If you just touch that there, look, it's, it's sort of... You've got a little bit of resistance there. Yeah. So it's just a little bit pink in the middle. OK, okay. you're waiting for it to go hard. Yep. And then you put it in your mouth. Is that right? That's exactly that, yes. OK. Now, try not to dribble round the outside of the plate. That's, That's really impressive. One last little thing, what I want you to do. Put a bit of that on top of the fish. Exactly, look. Wow. See, that wasn't too bad, <laughs> was it? It was great. Uh, I loved it. I've actually cooked you, a meal. You've done very well. Uh, you did very well. That is delicious. This is the nicest meal I've ever had that I've ever had a hand in cooking. Really? Mm. Well done. Thank you very much. Time for the main course, Trini and Susanna. Now, I'm going to be serving the diners two cuts, the belly of pork and the loin of pork. The belly takes a lot longer to prepare, but it's worth every second. There's definitely no waste on a pig. This is a belly of pork. It's cheap and delicious. And look, it's got these wonderful layers of fat. It's packed with flavour. Score. Season. Olive oil. Garlic. Time. Season both sides and lay it on top of your garlic. Lifts the belly of pork off the tray and stops it from drying out. White wine. Tin foil. Hot oven, two hours. Look underneath there. Lovely. Gravy. Deglaze the tray with the white wine. Reduce. The smell off that is amazing. Because the garlic's been roasted slowly and it's got that really nice, sweet flavour to it. Chicken stock. Reduce. We just smell that gravy now. You know damn well it's going to taste magical. Sieve. Push all that garlic through there. That. It's fucking delicious. Pressed pork. Place another tray on top of that. Way down. And set it in the fridge. Chill, six hours. And look at that. I could take a slice and actually eat that cold. Cut. They're like little caramel slices, compact, full of flavour, and now ready for the oven. Hot oven, ten minutes. Look at those. Absolute beauties. And just look at the textures and that nice, crispy top. Rich, sumptuous, full of flavour and absolutely delicious. Press belly of pork, done. This, for me, is the most important main course we'll ever cook in the F-Word restaurant, yeah? Yes, yes I've sir. had these just after birth. We've hand-reared them and... We're going to look after them. Belly of pork. Be careful, yeah? It starts to spit. We're going to put three or four portions in, some tin fall over, and just put it to the back of the stove, OK? OK. So with the pork tonight, we're serving, yes, the mustard mash, the broccoli, and the caramelised apples. Now, you need some heat in that pan, sugar in, and that's going to form a nice caramel, OK? A nice teaspoon of mustard, right at the last minute, in with the mashed potatoes. A nice mustard mash. So, right, GB, what's with the broccoli? Okay. What's in the pot with it? Onion. Onions, almonds, and That's right. capers. That's right. Apples, nicely coloured. And then finished with some fresh spring onions. In, and a little bit of chopped tarragon. Yeah? OK, now the tarragon, the apple, the spring onion is amazing. Look, that is just mind-blowing. Good. 
Belly of pork is cheap and delicious, but it's the loin that's the real classy cut. Loin of pork, rich, sumptuous, it's the most tender part of the pig. This is better when it's slightly pink. Yes, that's right, Granny, pink. First of all, you have to score that fat on the outside, you get some really nice, crispy crackling. Score. If you haven't got a sharp knife, I mean really sharp, use a Stanley knife, it works brilliantly. Stuff. Just slice into the centre and open it up. And look. Lemon zest. It gives it a really nice, summery, zesty lightness. Sage. Sage and pork go brilliantly well together. Parsley, garlic. Nice little thin shards. Salt, pepper. Olive oil. It's like a blanket of aroma. Fold it over, just like an envelope. Tie. Put the string in the pot to stop it from running around. Salt, pepper, olive oil. Mop it up. It smells amazing, it's not even cooked yet. Straight in. Hot oven, 45 minutes. Just the smell of that is amazing. Look, crispy crackling. Rest. Untie. Carve. Nice thick slices. That's what I like to hear, that noise, the crispy crackling. Tender and delicious. Fragrant lemon zest with the sage and the parsley. Extraordinary. Pork loin with lemon and sage, done. I want every single diner paying for their main course. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> right, ladies, four nice belly of pork. Yes, yes, yes. Peter, four pork away. Yes. Right, let's yes, go, Gordon. Lucy Lou, yes. GB. Yes, four portions Gordon. of pork away. Yes, Gordon. Let's go, please, yes? Yeah, it's eight I can do that bit. Let's put that in the back. Apples on. You want to get that pan really hot next time. Let's go. Quick. So that has to be the perfect way of eating Trini and Susanna, yeah? Go. Table 10. Right. Lucy. Yes, Gordon. Yeah? GB, please. Yes, Gordon. Four more away. Yes, four Gordon. Yes, Gordon. Belly of pork in. Are these... Francesca, you're going to have to shout at me. I can't hear you. Are these burnt or are, are they, they caramelised? Sherry, toss them. They're caramelised, yes? OK. Right. Okay. Lovely. Here we go. Let's go. Just need the potatoes. Now, look, doesn't that look fantastic? It does. Table eight, yeah, go. Let's go. Take that pan away from me. Then. Yeah, he, right. Then yeah, I need two fours now, yeah? OK. Two I'll fours away. Ladies, last tables, yes? Yes, Gordon. Yeah, make them the best. Yes, Just like Gordon. the first table, yes? Right, the first. Oh, hello. Careful. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I love it. Fantastic. Right, OK. Would you pay for those? I 100%. 100%. Definitely. GP, yeah. Definitely. Fantastic. I think it looks well, great. Great. Table eight, go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Come you. here. Two seconds, fun. please. Well done. Yeah, hard. Yes, good. A lot going on there. Definitely. Yeah, well done. Tough. You didn't let yourself down. More importantly, you didn't let the girls down, did you? Trini and Susanna, well done. No. Yeah. Clear down. Thank you. I really, really liked it. There were loads of different uh, varieties of textures and sort of tastes in there. Um, I thought that obviously there were a lot of quite elaborate flavours, but they merged together quite well. The belly of pork I've, I've never had before, so I was a bit bright about that, but I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. That was superb, like the different variations. I don't really, I've never had like crackling before as well. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The accompaniments as well, the mash and the vegetables, superb. Can't fault it. Can't fault it at all. Lovely. So hey. nice to see you. How are you? Well, Marie didn't get any crackling, so we we, we had a little word, and look, look what Damn. came. We got an extra crackling. Oh. Are you managing um, being married to this hippie? <laughs> Always looking for freebies. <laughs> Always on the scrounge. <laughs> ah, and such a messy cook. Well, ah. I'm glad you're right. Honestly, I mean, you must be mad, no? A little bit. Ah. 
Um, as an expert with pigs, yeah, um, what do you think of the loin and the belly? Honestly, delicious. Really? Delicious. Really lovely. Uh, Coming from you, that means a lot. You know that. A big thanks for all no, the no, help you put pleasure. into those pigs. I don't think You've enjoyed them, haven't you? Yeah, I have enjoyed them, and it's been an, an amazing experience, but highly emotional. You know, I didn't think pigs well, could be so I know, so you had a uh, tough attachable. time yeah, when you took them to slaughter. I mean, the children, obviously. They're right over here tucking in. They're tucking in away, and they're obsessed with the crackling, but I'd never thought they'd be that excited about it from sort of three months ago when they start sort of getting in the pen, and they're all sort They've of... They've got you know, over it nursing. quicker than you have. I'm looking forward to the challenge, yes. I, I can't believe I've got to some cooking in a minute. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm, I'm having a lovely, relaxing Get time. Get prepared to I'm, lose. I'm not feeling competitive. <laughs> Guess what? I'm not feeling competitive. Aren't you? I'll see you later. I will do when I get Good in there. You. Thank you. Cheers. Right. Hello. 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 How are you? Hello, my ladies. How are you? Jack, did you enjoy the pigs? Megan, did you enjoy looking after the pigs? Yeah. Yes? Do they taste better because you reared you them and grew them? Honey's still eating them. She suggested that we have cows in the back garden. Not, not on your nelly. When you were gone what this morning, we had the new grass laid. No cows, no. so there we go. Listen. It's not no common. It's no <laughs> bloody cows. So what about a donkey for Christmas? Baby yes. Lambs. Lambs. Baby yeah, lambs. baby lambs. Oh. I'm so glad you enjoyed the pigs. Good to see you. Mm. See you later, guys. Save room for dessert, yes? Hey, uh, JB. Where is he? How did he go down? Very well. Very well, yes? Very, very well. The feedback was what? Um, very juicy. They love the flavours. Nice combination with the apples yes. and the pork. Yes. Uh, they love the mash. Absolutely beautiful. Fantastic. Oh. Tell me how many customers are not paying for the main course? None. Yes! yes. yes. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Not one. Yeah. Not one? No one. Yes. That's fantastic. Well done, well done, well done. Well done. Oh That's my fucking goodness. amazing. Next on the menu, Hugh and Janet take me on in the recipe challenge. Stodge, stodge, stodge! These people will have to lie on the bloody carpet yeah. afterwards and get over their carbohydrate overload. And I'm going fishing for bass. Sea bass. I've never caught a fish from a spear. And not bad. First time out. I've come to Devon to go spearfishing for my favourite fish. Everyone thinks you've got to be on a Great Barrier Reef to go, but no, we're here in Plymouth. I feel like a bit of a fucking hunter because we're two experts and we're in search of the Rolls Royce of the sea, the sea bass. Spearfishing is a controversial sport. Some people think it's cruel, but in fact, it's one of the most sustainable methods of fishing, so I'm keen to give it a try. This is Eddystone Lighthouse, 10 miles off the Plymouth coast. I've been brought here by two of Britain's best spear fishermen, Dave Thomason and Dave O'Callaghan. It works more or less like a crossbow. Yeah. You put the butt of the gun against your chest and just pull that back and hook it into the notch on the spear. The barbs on the end to stop the fish coming off. Yeah. Pull the trigger. Yeah. And shoot. And out it comes. This is the best place to shoot. In the head. In the head. Yeah. Yeah. Enough chat. It's time to get tooled up and into the water. Hopefully we're going to catch something. Visibility's not too bad. Fingers crossed. I feel like a fucking action man. I've got to dive about 10 metres down, settle into the kelp and wait for the sea bass to swim past me. Spearfishing using an oxygen tank is frowned upon for giving the fisherman an unfair advantage over the fish. So we're doing it with a snorkel, which means holding your breath and it's not as easy as Dave makes it look. This is supposed to be the perfect place to hunt for sea bass because they flock to the rocks to feed. But so far, all I can see is seaweed. I missed one right in front of me. By the time I reloaded, the fish turned around and went like that and then fucked off. Sea bass are a challenge to catch, but they're bloody delicious, and I'm not quitting till I've got one. And finally, they all come at once, and I'm on a roll. I've got three stunning sea bass. I've never caught a fish from a spear, and not bad. 
First time out. Amazing experience. Bloody hard work. I'm oh, fuck, can I get out? Fishing etiquette says that you should only catch what you're going to eat. Just try and stop me. Inside and pull out. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> now we're going to score them. About an inch and a half apart. It just makes it cook evenly, and more importantly, it seasons it inside. Salt, lemon, saffron. This is where it gets really exciting because the saffron's flavouring the salt and colouring the salt. Now, fennel and bass go brilliantly. I've been serving it for years, and it's just that really nice rustic aniseed flavour that just goes brilliantly with the bass. Open it up and place all that lemon and fennel in there. And that keeps the bass really nice and whole, so it cooks evenly, and more importantly, got that amazing flavour. Wrap it in tinfoil and just drizzle that with olive oil, and that keeps it really nice and moist. And leave yourself a little handle on the end so you're not pissing around when you're coming to turn it. The sea bass only need to cook for eight minutes on each side. I didn't realise it was going to be that hard. I mean, you've got to be physically fit. Yeah, it helps. You haven't got to be super fit, though. I know people in their 80s who still spearfish. Is it a sport now that's getting popular all the time? It's becoming a lot more popular. It's a good way of getting some fresh seafood and having fun at the same time. Can spearfishing become commercial? No, it's actually illegal to sell speared fish. It's a European regulation. It's legal to sell fish caught with a projectile. From what I've seen, spearfishing is very efficient. Only the target fish is caught and it doesn't damage the seabed, and that has to be a good thing. Nice. Presentation's not good. But well, who the fuck <laughs> needs presentation on the beach, huh? Now, they may have beaten me before, but it's time for the ultimate challenge. I'm gonna whip their ass. Are you ready? In your dreams. Yeah? Very ready. Let's go, okay. ladies first. Are you in a good mood or a bad mood? Medium. Thank fuck for that. So we're all doing apple desserts, yes? Yeah, okay, the yeah perfect I'm doing dessert. a simple apple dessert. This, the perfect dessert to follow pork. Yes, Janet? Now, the most important thing about this challenge, okay, the winning dessert is going to be served in the rest of this evening straight after the main course, that, yeah? That's a bit of pressure. Right, Janet, what are you doing? Surprise baked me. Baked apples. Do you think the diners are going to want to pay for a baked apple? It's so simple. I've gone to Harrods and bought mincemeat. Has it got suet in there? It, it has got a tiny bit of suet ah, in it. Yeah. Bit of but not a bit lot. Fun. What's your ass pulsating in those jeans Look at again? That. Why have you got pastry exactly? Because, because I'm making a, a rice pudding apple tart. Oh dear. So I've got pastry, God, the filling, I've got a custody tarts. rice pudding filling that should set very nicely. And uh, the apples are going to go on top, just sort of lightly fried in a little bit of butter with a bit of sugar, slightly caramelised. But so you, before, people before this have had scallops and potatoes, yes. roast pork. I didn't know about the potatoes. And potatoes are now stodge, stodge, stodge. Not stodge, lovely yeah. fresh apples. I mean, these people will have to lie on the bloody carpet you're, afterwards you're, you're and get over their carbohydrate <laughs> overload. You're ladling in the Harrods mincemeat. It's not exactly Thank a slimmer you. special, but is it? Look at, yes. look, you, that's the hole. Oh. That's the oh, hole yeah, that the mincemeat meat goes in. Where's the volume it's a on that? Hole, isn't it? And that much mince meat isn't going to make my ass two sizes bigger, is it? It's a small <laughs> hole. It's a very <laughs> small hole. I try to shut her up. I've never managed it in the last two months. Yeah? Have a <laughs> fucking go, will you please? Yeah. So, whilst you's doing a rice pudding topped with apples, Madam's doing a baked apple. I'm going to keep it really simple. Doing an apple tart, just a very simple apple tart. But I'm using all the trimmings of the apple to make a little bit of a puree, a little bit of cinnamon and then a fresh vanilla seed. Open up, scrape out the seeds, and we're going to put that on the base of the tart, and then apple slice really thinly, this sort of wafer thin. And they're going to go all the way the around the tart. Form. You're slicing yours thick, Hugh, yes? Quite thick, yeah, because we just thick. want one layer of medium thickly sliced apples over uh -huh. the top of the rice pudding. This is so lovely, it's comforting. Yeah, I'm around. going to serve it with ice cream and when you serve this at your exquisite dinner parties at home to all your friends, yes? Yeah. Do they enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. Do they? I have people clearing up to come round my house for dinner. Um, so I've rinsed the, the pudding rice, I've blanched it and rinsed it, and now I'm just going to cook it, but instead of baking it in the oven, I'm going to cook it in a saucepan with a little knob of butter, 
and a splash of whole milk. Right. So just a little bit like cooking a risotto. Right. Well, mine's ready to go in the oven. What? Sorry, loves. We've just started. You've got, you've got to have. Yeah, it. because I'm cooking something that in the real world <laughs> you feel like cooking after you cut the other two courses. The way I see it, this is really kind of a final between Janet and myself. Exactly. Oh, we've right. both beaten you before. Can you fuck off? And, and you're I just can't believe you finished already. But there again, you had fuck all to do. But I'd take it out of the jar, stick it in an apple, <laughs> and bake the fucking thing. That's really lovely. Actually. So my face has been rolled out, <clears throat> not too thick. And then the what we're going to do now is just turn it around at your finger and nip the pastry what so it forms this little me? lip. And what that does, it helps to keep the apples in the centre of the tart. Give it a little pierce so it stops the pastry from rising. And then we'll be ready in five minutes to put that puree in there and then our apples on there. Apples look nice, though, don't they? A little bit of colour on them. They do look no, nice. That would nice. make my dessert. That would be perfect. Why are you bothering with all the pastry? That looks you know fantastic. What? I should just be serving that with a bit of ice cream. You're probably that right. That looks absolutely fantastic. I've got a little bit of Calvados in the apple puree. <laughs> Is that, it looks like it looks like a real mess. That. It's it looks all like the puree. It looks like capsicum. Oh, for God's oh, sake! Dear. Hey, listen, guys. Look, it's a puree. Pastry. Janet's not happy because it didn't come out of a jar. By the way, I put the mince meat into the ice cream. I've beaten it into the ice cream and I'm putting it back in the freezer. And then I'm going to pretend it's homemade. The hot cream goes into the egg yolks and sugar, whisking all the time so it doesn't curdle, doesn't scramble. A little bit of rice still in there, might as well, that might as well go in. And then over here, the rice has been simmering for just 15 minutes. It's, it's almost tender. So it's ready to put the two together. So now it's all come together. We've got the rice, the cream, the milk, the egg yolks, the sugar, all in the same pan. We just need to stir it gently over the heat for it to start to thicken up as a custard. Mm, that's come together beautifully now. I don't want to fill it right to the top because I've got to have room for my apple slices over the top. Let's give it a little shake. Look at that. Rice pudding in a tart. Rice yeah. pudding in a tart. Yep. Why not? Cool it down. Apples go on top, yep. serve it at room temperature. A little bit of apple puree. Oh, that's very fancy. I see. So you use the paste to kind of... Stand it it's up. It's like cement. It's exactly Probably going to taste like cement as well. Cool. See ya. Gordon, you haven't got any spare apple slices, have you? I've got... He's going to have loads here. He's got far I've got a minutes. terrible feeling this... I haven't quite fried enough for the top of my tart. They're very... them out a bit here. you. Well, they won't look as good, will it? I Janet, this what is what's called cooking the real world, yeah, not apples out of jar. This is what I go and buy down a pastry chef. Why am I going to waste time making it? It looks lovely. I'm not knocking it. A... It is an artwork, Gordon. <laughs> Gordon, you're getting a, you know, <laughs> you can't do this in a hurry, can you, Gordon? I can now, I can now. You're can't... holding us up. Hugh, have you finished? Very, very nearly. I'm just going to make a tiny bit of a glaze for the top. Oh, no, you get on with it. Just a tiny bit more, a tiny bit of this syrup on the top. That's pretty much ready. It just needs to settle down for 10 or 15 minutes. We'll serve it at room temperature. What's that? Butter. 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 Look. Butter. And you're going on about my minuscule amount of lard. Oh, look. <laughs> a bit of... <laughs> 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 He's so anxious to win. Janet, can you fuck off, please? Right, yeah, let I'll me finish, for God's sake. <laughs> Now we're going to we cook go. this for 10 minutes, then turn it over and cook it upside down so it presses it nice and flat and squashes all those apples into the pastry. Don't mess up my... Hang on, hang on. F 15 minutes. Then we'll turn it over. For how long? 15 minutes. Right, Janet's apples are in. My tart's going to take about 15 or 20 minutes. Once that comes out, we're going to let it rest. Hugh's tart is resting, and then we're going to serve them all to the blind tasters. I'm back home, up here in Scotland, in Greenock, where my grandfather used to have a butcher's shop, and I'm here to see if it's still there. When my grandfather came back from the war in 1945, he opened a butcher's on Greenock's bustling high street. In those days, everyone bought their meat from the local butcher, and there were queues outside the shop. And it wasn't just like that in Greenock. When I was a kid, everyone bought their meat from local butchers, like my grandfather's. But Britain's butchers are beginning to look like an endangered species. Where'd you get your meat from? Tesco's. Tesco's. <laughs> Tesco's. Out of Tesco's. Out of Tesco's. Tesco's. Supermarkets. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what's wrong with your butchers? We've got one. 
I found it. Now, according to these photographs, this is where my grandfather's butcher shop used to be. And it's actually a sort of health food shop now, which is quite sad in a way, because all I remember from him in the early days is just how long and how hard he used to work. His dad's grandfather's shop is just there. That's right, yes, used to be. That's right, yes, the most. These days, 75% of our meat is bought from supermarkets, and sadly, butcher shops are closing across the UK. And it's not just the lack of customers that threatens our high street butchers. They're also struggling to find people who want to work in them. Ever thought about becoming a butcher? No, never. Would you ever consider becoming a butcher? No. You're leaving school in a couple of years' time? Uh, yeah. Ever thought about becoming a butcher? No. Why not? Because <laughs> it smells. <laughs> if we lose the high street butcher, we lose a crucial food skill. The average age of a British butcher today is 57 years of age. So, if there's any chance of the high street butcher surviving, we've got to encourage more youngsters to come into the industry. I'm here in Leeds at the Thomas Danby College to see if there's a glimmer of hope. Morning, guys. How are we? These three 17-year-old lads are bucking the trend and training to be skilled butchers at one of the few colleges that still offer a butchery course. What's your ambitions? Hopefully, to take over my father's shop. He's got a shop in the Burr Market. Women like butchers. I thought it was firemen. No, butchers. So butchers are the new firemen, right? They love a good butcher. They love a good butcher. If these lads are going to succeed, they need to know how to cut meat. But they also need to understand how to cook it. OK, cooking the steak. And it's a big advantage when customers walk in and ask you um, how to cook a steak perfectly. I've got a fail-safe trick to make sure your steak is cooked perfectly every time. So we've got rare, medium. Well done, it's just there. Is that nice and rare? Yep. Yep. That is a rare steak. Danny, how you cooked yours? Medium. Medium. Good man. So, touch it. How's that cooked? Cool. Fucking hell, yeah, that is well done, yeah. Looks like a pair of Dr. Martins. <laughs> and you cooked this for your girlfriend two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. Is she still with you? Yeah. Is she still chewing as well? <laughs> Give these guys a chance and support your local butchers. These guys are here to stay and we need more of them. Next on the menu, I reveal which chef came bottom of the pile in my celebrity cookbook amnesty. My top three unofficial losers in the poll are... And we get the results of the recipe challenge. Will the diners get to eat my classic apple tart, Hughes rice pudding or Janet's baked apple? OK, for the first time, we're having a draw. A what? Yes. A draw? Oh, get yes, out! A draw? A draw? Yeah. With a two draw. winners? Yes, with two. So Someone's going to feel a bit ropey then, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, time to decide whose dessert we'll be serving this evening. Excited? Yes. Yeah. Sorry for losing, yes? No. Hello. How are you? Hello. Right. Thank you. It's quite rustic. Mm. It's really nice and comforting. There's a, really there's a mixture of being sweet and acidic as well. I actually prefer the ice cream to the apple. Presentation isn't quite as good on this one, I'd say. It kind of really? looks uh, slightly burnt around the edges, yeah. but it, I do like it. It's quite simple. I think the flavour's nice mm. on that, but... It's, mm. it's, yeah, it's simple. And it's not overpowering, either. Mm. Nice, crisp pastry. Actually, I don't know about the texture. It's a bit cold. And it's funny, isn't it? if it's is meant it? to be. It's quite eggy, I suppose, but I yeah. really like it. OK. Right. For the first time, we're having a draw. A what? Yes. A draw? Oh, get yes, out! A draw! A draw? Yeah. A two draw. winners? Yes, with two. So well, someone's going to feel a bit ropey then, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> so we're having two votes for Jeanette. Two. Oh, oh yes! <laughs> OK, two votes for... It's got to be me. Don't you dare. Yes! <laughs> oh, oh, yeah! Well, I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. Yeah. OK, well done, mate. Oh, well, no! Oh, 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 oh. um, we have to serve. We'll have to, you know, obviously serve them. Yeah. That's yeah. not really a problem for me. OK. Phew. I'm no. quite glad to be out of this, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you best start now, because yours is going to take about ten bloody hours. You're going to have to do the front door, the service, sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> get working now, you know, get right. slicing. Right. I can get... go back to the, my table and enjoy pudding. Yeah. Yes, please. Perfect. Now, fuck off, both of you. <laughs> Thank Brilliant. you. And don't come back, Janet. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> right, ladies. <laughs> for some bizarre reason, yes, I drew, yeah, with Janet. Ooh. Now, it's called a tart fin, OK? So it's a nice caramelised, thin apple tart. This is just puff pastry. Nip it over and nip it in. Mm. Apple puree. We cook it for 20 minutes, then we turn it upside down and cook the pastry. Now, the important part is to pack the tart with all the apples. Pack the apples on there, yes? Don't worry about them being broken. Quite large. Now, soft butter. We just 
brush the paste. Yeah? I think I feel my heart attack coming on right well, now. Well, you know what to do if one happens. Fucking yeah, hell. Yeah? Me. Exactly. What's the first thing brushing, you do? Brushing, brushing, Just make sure it's safe. You know? Make sure it's safe, yes. yes. And then I if it was you, I'd have to make sure it was safe. First thing you do is, is <laughs> remove the hoover <laughs> off their cot. <laughs> oh, dear, ladies. <laughs> huh? Right, Lucy. Yes, Gordon. Every time I come over here, you disappear. Come here. This is your tart. Let's go. I'm here. Let's go. Well, stay here then. Is that enough, Gordon? Is that enough butter, That's it. Gordon? And round the bottom, round the bottom. Right, Gordon. Mate. Let's go, right. ladies. Tarts in the oven. Let's go. Yes. Tarts. 180. Okay. Over the last two months, I've been running a celebrity cookbook amnesty, encouraging people to send me their unwanted celebrity cookbooks. I made it my mission to help you clear your kitchen bookshelves of the cookbooks that you thought were crap. Meals in minutes, shredded in seconds. As well as shredding some, I also made some celebrity chef toilet paper. Ah! <laughs> you know what? That is the scariest. Uh, it's Freddy Krueger. Uh, <laughs> the Freddy Krueger of the kitchen. You sent in cookbooks from almost every chef, including six of my old cookbooks, you cheeky buggers. But there were three who came out top, or bottom. My top three unofficial losers in the poll are Ainsley, Gary and Delia. What in the fuck are you doing down there? I didn't expect the safety net of British cooking to be in that category. The numbers were too close to call, so to find out who's bottom of the pile, I've come down to the Thames to ask some random passers-by to do a taste test. I've gone through Ainsley's, Delia's and Gary's most sent-in books, picked out a cod recipe, well, we are right next to the river, and asked people to tell me which one they like least. Right, Gary Rosie, parsley cod with roasted potatoes and a mustard sauce. <laughs> Which one of those three dishes is the worst? That one. That one. Yeah. You spit it out, or yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Just, just, yeah. Which one is the worst for you? Mm, let me think. That one. Yeah. This one. <laughs> that is toilet. Ouch. Sorry, Gary. Delia Smith. That's cod wrapped in nori on a sober noodle salad. Oh, no, I don't like that. You don't like that? No, there's nothing to it. Bland oil. Poor Delia. Ainsley Harriet's a citrus crust with salsa, Cajun potatoes, and steamed broccoli. No, it's got no flavour. Got no flavour. Which one is the worst? Oh, 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 oh. Probably Ainsley. Ainsley's moans in minutes. Someone had to come last. And based on my totally unscientific survey, the most unpopular celebrity cookbook of those sent in under my amnesty is... Gary. So there's only one place for this. I know where that's going. Damn. You're gonna get your hair wet. Jean Baptiste. Okay. <laughs> what happened with the desserts? Come on. 100 percent. Everybody. 100%, yeah. 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 everybody. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Seriously. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Only one person <laughs> might have made. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. 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 Happy now? <laughs> One final thing. I just yeah. Yeah. Everyone agreed to pay for the dessert, yeah. Yeah, which, which dessert, yeah, obviously fantastic news, yeah. but which dessert did they prefer? Don't tell me that fucking baked apple. Which one did they prefer? OK, they prefer yours. Yeah! yeah. How, How many? Out of 50, 34 people prefer 34, yours. 34, is that yeah. all? Yeah, and 16 for Jan. And 16? Yeah. Uh, well done. Well done. Well done. Happy? Very yes. Very yeah. Ready to stick a tetanus jack in my ass? Never. <laughs> no? never. I I'm never going to Chelsea against my stuff. <laughs>